investigation techniques on terrorist suspects in the aftermath of the September 11, 2001 attacks, which killed more than 3,000 people in New York and Washington, D.C. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports it seems police in New York are intent on looking the other way when it comes to minor offenses. On New Year's Eve, officers with the New York City Police Department failed to issue a single citation in Times Square. One million partygoers, zero tickets. The only low-level arrest made in Times Square on New Year's Eve were subway-related. Not a single reveler was cited for possession of an open alcohol container or public urination. There were also zero tickets written for double parking or public drunkenness. Zero isn't the total of minor offenses ticketed on New Year's Eve. It's the total for the entirety of the holiday weekend, which officially ran from December 28th through January 3rd. While it's possible the surprisingly low number of citations is an anomaly, or that this year's revelers were unusually polite and sober, the ancillary evidence suggests otherwise. Instead, the New Year's Eve numbers seem to confirm suggestions that police officers are purposefully ignoring lesser offenses. The New York Times reported earlier this week, police officers arrested or ticketed only 22 people for avoiding the subway fare by jumping the turnstiles last week. One year ago, during the first week, of January 2014, police cited nearly 1,400 New Yorkers for the same offense. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. While Digital Communications Coordinator Brian Tyler is considered by many of his co-workers to be the cutest guy around the offices of Western Psychological Publishing Services, employees conceded today the 27-year-old is not even particularly attractive. Brian gets a lot of attention from girls around here, but if I saw him in a bar, I don't know if I would even notice him. Put him next to Glenn or Mike, and then, sure, he actually looks pretty good. Co-workers explained to reporters that by everyday standards, Tyler would at best be considered moderately good-looking, but explained that given the abundance of unattractive men at the publishing firm, female employees often go out of their way to make small talk with the 27-year-old at his desk or eat lunch with him in the office kitchen. I saw him walking to work the other day and half the guys on the street were easily better looking than him, but here he's the hottest guy around. It's almost kind of sad. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd still f*** him. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday edition of the program. Of course, you may, as always, take control of the airwaves here and bring up anything that happens to be on your mind. With you in the studio, you've got me, Ian. And a demo. And don't forget, you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com to enjoy the features waiting for you on the website. Again, that's freetalklive.com. Great way for you to get interactive with other Free Talk Live listeners is right there. You get to vote on what's there on the front page. Vote it up if you like it. Vote it down if you don't. You can even submit things uh, there as well. Coming up this week is going to be a historic week, um, and it may end up being more than a week. Who knows how long the trial of Ross Ulbricht is going to take. I haven't heard any estimates on this. So. I bet you it'll take... I mean, definitely weeks, if not uh, a, a better than a month, you know. It, there's a good chance of that. Uh, I certainly expect that it'll be at least, like you said, a week or two at the at the minimum. Yeah, um, weighing on a lot of, because they have a lot of questions or like what witnesses can be. I mean, I'm sure we'll get into some well, of Well, I imagine there's minute. going to be a lot of technical discussion as right. well, because, you know, Ross Ulbricht, if you were new to the show, you may not have heard the name before. He is the man who's accused of running the Silk Road, which is an under, was an underground kind of drug marketplace, more of a black marketplace. Well, it, it was a website, yeah. right? It was a website that he built and then other uh, folks... Dread Pirate Roberts built it. We don't know well, if, true. Uh, if Ross Ulbricht is Dread Pirate Roberts. That's what the state is going to be trying to prove. Yeah, or if he's one of many of them, right? Yes. There's maybe several. But well, it's a website to have uh, a, a voluntary interactions or exchanges with for good services and a number of other things. And so 
uh, Ross may or may not have created it, but he and also may or may not have been running it at the time of his arrest, right? And that's what he's on Correct. trial for. So they're basically coming at him as though he's a drug kingpin. Right. You know, as though he's the equivalent to Pablo Escobar for the, you know, the internet age. Right. Don Corleone in the movie The Godfather. Right. And even though he has not been charged federally with any uh, murder for hire plots, they're going to allege during his trial. This is one of the motions that was granted before the trial started by the judge who's basically seems like she's on the prosecution side pretty obviously. Well, here. that's that I mean, should have been obvious. Trying to hide, she's not even trying to hide you know, the fact that she's totally biased, they're going to allow the prosecution to bring up the allegations that Ross hired hitmen to take out some of his competitors, not competitors, but like people who are going to snitch on him and things like that. Right, out him publicly yeah. or something that claim, but who are essentially trying to extort him, blackmail him. Yeah, well, there was that, and there was a few different instances. It, that were if the story outlined. that they're claiming is true, they were the the individuals right. are creating blackmail, and he was trying to solve it with murder for hire, right? And that's have, the allegation. That's the allegation, and we have no idea if it's true because he's yet to be charged, you know, federally. I've heard rumors there's a charge in Maryland about that, but I still am not sure what the status of that is. But either way, they're going to be allowed to bring up claims about him right with no evidence, with no evidence, with no proof, character smashing, right? That he actually did this and. Th- this is one of the things they did when they first busted him after the Silk Road got ra- when the Silk Road got raided and he got arrested. They started trotting out these stories about how he was, you know, this murder right. for hire Plant guy. him in the media. And then the idea there was to blackball or was to sort of give him a black eye, if you will, because previously Dread Pirate Roberts and Ross Ulbricht, whether they're one and the same or not, has yet to be proven. But previously, the both of them had been very ardent libertarians and you know dread pirate roberts had on his website the silk road he had like a book reading club where he would recommend libertarian nonfiction right. nice. and things like that to people uh so presumably this guy believed in the non-aggression principle and that you know maybe the idea being that well dread pirate roberts from his principles probably wouldn't have been doing murders for hire Um, But the feds want to make it look like he was so people won't be as likely to support him. There were a lot of people who would have been behind him in this case, but then they heard that he was, you know, behind killing people, even though there's no proof. And that was enough for that was enough for people to think twice about getting behind his case. I think they did a good job of dragging him through the mud. They definitely they definitely smeared him with some black paint there, as they they like to do in many, you know, other cases you see in Ruby Ridge and uh, Waco. You know, they bring up uh, firearms or children, you know, these these very touchy subjects with a lot of people that will instantly divide any group, uh, most likely in half, if not, you know, further, more uh, divided sections. But um, it's interesting that you bring this up because I had a few conversations with some of my friends about this. And, you know, I thought myself like, well, what if they would ever say this about a friend of mine? You know, and I would I would think that I, you know, I can't believe anything the government says ever. Like, I don't know why this still works. Why does this tactic work That's still? what I thought, Ademo, when I first read Because I read the indictment when they indicted him, and it was a long, you know, I, I forget how many damn pages it was. But, you know, I, I, I skimmed through slash read the entire thing. And that was the first thing I thought was the feds are liars. They're going to lie about right. this I want guy. someone to call in and tell us why they would think this way. Because, like, why they would buy this. Because, like, even if the government tells me, and they're like, without, like, third party like objective truth a video or something like that that was like shot by somebody else like i can't believe everything they say and like right. the, the whole indictment and, and you say you read it like you even if it's 10 percent truth 90 percent truth i don't know like you can't believe everything they say and how could you you know withdraw your support of a guy who maybe like it, at least if, if i was i would if i was ross's friend i would assume that even if i didn't agree with these actions i would be like, well, 90, like, you know, everything else was good. Like, I don't know. I would never, you know, f- withdraw support over some allegations from the state. Well, you and I may be unusual, uh, Ademo. I don't know. I, I don't know how many people withdrew support, but I know some, I know it worked, right? Like that sure. was a tactic that, that they used for that reason. And so now they're going to do the same thing in front of the jury where they're going to get to trot out all these allegations about murder for hire, which they only have allegedly because they broke into the server Who's to say the feds didn't plant that information there? I mean, how can they prove that it was Russ? If even if there are emails with somebody, you know, on the other end who is a federal agent claiming to be the hitman or whatever, even if they have emails coming from Dread Pirate Roberts' account, how is you know how can we verify that they're being honest about that? 
You can't. You can't. I mean, you, you don't. And like you said, this just could be a smear campaign. I mean, they're going to get a jury that's already basically selected by the state. I'm sure they're, I don't know if, what the jury selection process is in federal court, but I, I know either. that all the people that you select from come from the state. You know, they mm-hmm. the state uh, summons Probably them to their, their building. Probably from IRS tax returns. Or I've also heard like that, that it comes from voter registrations in some states. Do the Fed? No, no, but no, this is federal. Oh, right? you're so right. Like, how you're do right. the Feds get their list? That's a good point. Yeah, I don't know. So the IRS would probably make more sense. Because I know that here in New Hampshire, it's both voter and driver's license. Oh. It's not like that everywhere, I don't think. And I don't know what the federal rules are. Maybe you know. You can let us know toll free, 855 450 free. You can also bring up anything. I've got a story here I want to get into when we get a chance because. Calls are already coming in, but uh, Andy Greenberg over at Wired has an article called Why the Silk Road Trial Matters. We know it matters, but maybe you don't know why. We'll get into the reasons here in a moment. Dave is first with us, though, listening in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Dave. Hey, guys. Well, I wanted to check in and see if you guys knew any more than I do about uh, this apparently apparently a free stater state rep uh, voted uh, in favor of the the, the ban on guns in part of the state house. Oh, okay. I think what you're talking about is that the uh, the ban that you're referring to has been overturned, and so that's, that person voted against overturning the ban. The ban that you're referring to pro- prohibits, or it prohibited, uh, state representatives and others, I guess, from, or actually I heard it was just state reps, but it prohibits people from bringing guns into the state house chambers here in New Hampshire. Is that right? Or prohibited. Yeah, and my understanding is that it affects the the uh, the balcony uh, uh, where uh, average people would go if they actually want to see what's going on in the in the uh, in the state state house floor. Yeah, that was also uh, my I, understanding I, of it as well. And so what happened was, and this is one of the things I love about New Hampshire's political situation. I mean, I don't like politics very much at all, but you know there are things you can appreciate about New Hampshire's kind of the way things happen here. So the way things happen here in New Hampshire is frequently like every two years or so the power shifts from one political party to another. And so what will happen is, like, you know, a couple years ago, the Democrats took control, and so they passed some bad stuff. They did a couple good things, too, but they passed some bad stuff. And so now that the Republicans are in control, they're coming in, and they're undoing some of the bad stuff that uh, the Democrats And passing some of their good stuff. And they'll pass some bad stuff and some good stuff, too. Bad stuff. But then the the Democrats will take back control in a couple more years, and they'll undo the stuff that the Republicans did. So unlike most places where every few years government just keeps getting bigger because the the parties ignore all the crap that was done before they get into office, at least here in New Hampshire, they they actually do spend time repealing legislation. And that's what they did. They actually repealed the ban on guns in the statehouse chambers, which only lasted for a couple years. But we'll come back with more on this. Dave, hang on. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in New Hampshire people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938, 877-357-9938. 
Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, why the Silk Road trial matters. It's kicking off on Tuesday, presuming there's not some last-minute uh, delay. It's already been delayed a number of times. And uh, Ross Ulbricht, of course, has been in a jail cell the entire time, the last 13 or so months, awaiting this trial, this moment. So uh, we'll talk more about that because some friends of the show and uh, show hosts are going down there, uh, which is exciting. And so we're going to actually have people in Manhattan starting tomorrow. Actually, the, Michelle Seven's already there, uh, but people are going to be there. They're going to be showing up tomorrow and then on Tuesday morning do an outreach. And we'll talk more about what's actually going to happen here in a little bit and why it matters. Your calls, of course, uh, are one of the major things that we do here is we talk to you about whatever's on your mind, and we're going to continue taking your calls here in a moment. Also, want to remind you about how to get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. It's 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica, and shade grown. This is great coffee. Everyone who's ever told me how they feel about it it's been positive. They loved BuzzBox coffee. You can go try it for yourself. They think you're going to enjoy it. That's why they're giving you an entire pound. All you have to do is pay the shipping cost. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get your coffee. And then you'll be on their auto ship program, which you can cancel your subscription at any time. But they will ship you the coffee you prefer in the amount that you specify and the frequency. So how often they're going to ship it. You can customize all of that over at coffee.freetalklive.com. Plus, you're helping change people's lives for the better in really tough parts of the world because a portion of the profits from each of these pounds are going to create micro loans for people in again difficult parts of the world where you know they might need to make an investment in their business or upgrade something well those are what those micro loans help make possible 
And that's pretty exciting. So not only do you get great coffee, but you're also helping people all around the globe. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can learn more. That's coffee.freetalklive.com. There was news just about five days ago, four or five days ago, posted to freekeen.com by Daryl W. Perry that by a vote of 228 to 149, so fairly you know good margin there, the New Hampshire House voted to amend the first sentence of House Rule 63 to read, quote, no person, including members of the House, except law enforcement officers, while actively engaged in carrying out their duties as such, shall display any deadly weapon uh, as defined in RSA, blah, 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 while in the House chamber, anterooms, cloakrooms, or any portion of the State House adjacent to the above. Uh, let's see, that was a, hmm, wait a minute. Oh, they were amending that sentence. Okay. So uh, after the rule was changed in 2011, Boston.com reported weapons prohibitions in the gold-domed New Hampshire State House have been debated for years. Since 1971, weapons had been barred from the House chambers, Norelli said. In 1996, a Republican majority banned weapons from the Capitol complex, including the Legislative Office Building, and then lifted that ban in 2006. In 2009, the Democratic majority banned weapons from the complex. Technically, the ban only ever applied to state representatives, though in practice, it applied to everyone. This new rule repealed the old wording, which I believe means that no one will be prevented from concealed carrying in the state house. So the vote was largely along party lines, etc. And then he goes down a list of who actually voted in what way. But essentially, my understanding of this, Ademo, is that now you can carry a weapon into the state house chamber. I guess the idea was that they didn't want anyone with a gun in the state house chamber because they might get angry during a debate and shoot someone. I really don't understand because previously you could still bring a gun into the state house building. You just could not bring it into the chamber where they have their debates and that kind of thing. And that's what Dave was calling about tonight uh, in New Hampshire. Dave, you're back on Free Talk Live. You said there was actually a Free State Project participant who's an elected state representative who voted to keep the prohibition on guns. Is that correct? Yeah, there was a post on the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance uh, Facebook page. Uh, this gentleman said, uh, basically, Elizabeth Edwards, why did you vote against guns? You know, or something. That's not a quote, but he basically, why did you, why did you, why did you vote against guns? And I, I, I went and looked through the whole thread to see if there might be any indication that he was wrong, you know, because someone would say, no, she didn't vote that way. But there's 29 comments, and they're all talking about her vote. So it's, it sounds like there must be some something to to this concern that he had. He, she must have, I, I'm guessing she must have voted, voted that way, but I just don't, I couldn't find any other information about her vote. So it sounds like, actually, my reading of this, I was actually a little surprised. It sounds like there's still a prohibition on open carrying in the state house chamber. Is that your understanding? I don't know. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't even know there was a difference in, in the rule in terms of open and concealed. Well, it says here, uh, I mean, maybe Daryl mis, misreported this, but he's usually pretty good at, at doing research on this kind of thing. It says that, uh, that no person, including members of the house, shall display any deadly weapon while in these certain locations. <laughs> what so other word these? So it sounds like you can yeah. you can you maybe previously had been pro prohibited from carrying any weapon but now the prohibition is only to display it. So it, it did seem to have loosened the restrictions uh on them which of course weren't particularly strict. I mean just to be clear, there's no metal detectors. I I think that people don't people don't realize what it's like here in New Hampshire. There's no metal detectors at all. Most of these lots of these state houses like Texas apparently there's like metal detectors you have to go through to even get inside the building. Yeah, I was surprised uh, when I went to Concord my first time. Right you just in. walk right in, you no walk problem. around right up into a office. There's a there's usually when you're going up to watch them if you were going to go sit in the the, the balcony. House chamber in the balcony. Yeah. There's usually a state trooper positioned outside of the door. That's it. He'll just shake your hand and greet you when you when you walk in. I mean, he's not shaking you down or patting you down or anything like that. So even though there was a prohibition on it before, it wasn't being enforced in any kind of meaningful manner. So this is more of like a symbolic vote than anything else. And so I guess the the surprise is that a Free State Project participant who is a uh, uh, an elected, she's newly elected, uh, that she had voted to keep the previous prohibition. And from what I understand, Dave, she has yet to respond to inquiry about this. Is that correct? I couldn't find anything on her Facebook page, and I couldn't find anything on this thread about it from her. Uh, it appeared to be about a two-day-old thread, but she may have responded somewhere else. And 
And in fact, for all I know, this thread could be wrong. I just it seems very unlikely that it would go on for that long without someone saying something yeah. that was completely inaccurate. And uh, the other thing is that it brings up a, a really important issue that we should be talking about more. That is, she's not she's it's, it's a little almost unfortunate that I even have to mention her name because she's probably no more guilty than the average free stater who's in in the state house. There's probably probably a lot of them are voting this way on, you know, anti-liberty, at least, on, on various issues. There was, I guess, the, you know, a case, I think, didn't Joel Roush vote in favor of the minimum wage? I don't even what know who that is. Like, but, um, you know, I don't know. I don't follow all the individual I'm votes. Sorry, I'm sorry, Joel, not Joel Roush, Joel, Joel Winters. Yeah, most of our name. listeners don't know who that is. He's one of the free staters who was first elected. Of course, Free State Project is the idea of moving liberty-oriented people all to one place. But, you know, there's not a litmus test as far as that you have to believe one way or another on, on different issues. Um, so, you know, I don't know what the explanation is. And obviously, you know, not all free staters think alike. And I think there's a, a common misconception, or I don't know how common it is, but there's a misconception out there that free staters are sort of this hive mind and that they all, you know, think exactly alike on every single question. And certainly this is one that's an important question. Obviously, the right to bear arms is pretty important to liberty oriented people in general. And, uh, and I think that, you know, she probably should give at least an explanation for it. But people this, behave differently when they get the, the ring of power, right? Yeah, this to me is an example of, you know, they say like, oh, I'm getting the system and change things. Well, sometimes it's the system that changes you. Yep. Dave, thanks for your call tonight. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You take control here. This is Free Talk Live. More coming up on Ross Ulbricht's trial, which is kicking off on Tuesday. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Get updates on your favorite GCN shows and hosts. Go to GCNlive.com and click on the banner in the upper left corner. Just for signing up, you're automatically entered for monthly giveaways. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. GCN. Saying that a few images of displaced refugees would probably do the trick, Americans admitted this week that they could probably be talked into another war. Citizens Nationwide told reporters that if they were to see a blurry satellite image of potential nuclear weapons or footage of an evil militant group, they could easily see themselves getting on board with another major military effort. I'm not saying I'd be gung-ho about it right away, but if they called it something like a concentrated military operation or something other than war at first, I could see myself warming up to the idea. Honestly, just hearing a top official on TV say something like patriotic duty might clinch it. And in this week's op-ed pages, an area man finds it's just his luck to lose thousands at the blackjack tables every night for the past few weeks. In other news, a senator tries submitting a rejected bill to the Canadian Parliament. What mom would have wanted is evolving over the course of funeral planning. And a new report finds you're actually saving money with a Franklin Skate Center roller rink membership. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com what if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? 
liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free here. It is the live Sunday edition of the program. Coming up, details on the Ross Ulbricht trial. It's about to kick off on Tuesday. Probably the most important case in America right now, at least that I know of. There's obviously a lot of court cases going on, but this one's pretty big. And we'll tell you why, according to Andy Greenberg over at Wired.com, why the Silk Road trial matters. And you're welcome to share your thoughts with us. With you in studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And a demo. A demo's here, courtesy of copblock.org. We're going to go right back into your calls and thoughts then. Uh, more on the Silk Road trial. We've got Alma on the line in Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live, Alma. Hey, sweet bye. Hey, oh, Alma. God, I'm going to quit it one day. That's, that's what we do in the South. I call all little children sweetie pie, and you're a lot younger than I am. Oh, that doesn't bother all me. Right, I'm from the you. South. Well, bless your heart. Yeah. Here we go again. All right. All the world is sad and weary. You know what that is. And that is the truth. No, you know, know what, why yeah. do why do we have to separate ourselves into groups? I listen to this comedian show every Sunday, and I got really upset. I've been upset for hours. I said, I'm getting on your oh, show no. and say this. I am sick of Yanks talking about. They specifically, he made a joke about Georgia people. As a scurvy mouth, well, maybe Yanks have scurvy mouths. They use a fluoride toothpaste, don't they? I never, I never had the a South will rise mouth. again. Yeah, I never, I never had. So wait, a just what's a Yank? A Yankee. Well, right? I know what she means. I was okay. wondering what she means. Like, what I mean, you're is, what? A Yankee. Yeah. That's how you say it, Yankee. Yankee. But I never, I never had a cavity in my head till I was 20 years old. Uh. I got married. My husband wanted to use toothpaste. I always used baking soda and salt. And what you're saying is that <laughs> after... Toothpaste? You're saying is that after you started using toothpaste, you got your first my cavity? My teeth started rotting out of oh my, my head. So, yes. no, no, so what you're saying is this comedian, you believed he was from the North? That's why you're calling him a Yank? Yes, he talked... To, he, yeah, I, I know a Northern accent when I hear a Northern accent. <laughs> <laughs> you got me? <laughs> I'm from the South. Yes, you are. I know are. when you're a Yankee. Well, Alma, but, uh, I, I hope that we helped insulting. you get that off your chest. It was insulting, and I, I've heard it a well, lot. Well, that's what comedy lately. is. I mean, unfortunately, there's usually somebody who's the brunt of the but joke. But they do it not only in comedy. They do it on the news. They do it everywhere. Insulting they're Southerners, in the you mean? South constantly. You're saying that on the news that you feel like they're insulting Southerners? Even Are you talking yes. about like the national news? Oh, yes. I okay. watch the creepy shows on Sunday. Stop watching television. That's TV. what I would say. I mean, television yeah, television's shows. terrible about stereotyping people. And, and all they do is put the South down. All they do is put us down here. We're just people. We believe what we believe. Whatever that well, is. Who, you know? Who's they? There, you mean like media puts you down? The, yeah, the, 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 the Hollywood media puts yes. us down. Uh, who's behind media? Oh, the who, band. Who pay you? Who pay you? You know, that's what uh, I want to get not getting paid. I don't get paid. Yeah, I just, I just I show up because I like to hear young, myself talk. I get on there and ask them, who pay you? Ah, there you go. Alma, oh, thanks. who owns you. I think thanks. she sees the shirt. <laughs> 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 thanks for the call. I hope you got that off your chest. Appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Yeah, it's not good to just stay angry all day. You don't want to do that. I mean, yeah, I don't get that. If the TV, look, 
I don't watch television. I don't have to. I don't. I've not had television since I left my parents' house. You know that, and that was a decade and a half ago. Um, I don't miss it. You know, I, I don't miss it. I, I went to a coworker's house today and watched a football game, and I was just like in awe for like the first forty-five minutes of commercials of how that came amazing up. I was like, they are, you mean, like amazingly what? dumb they are. Yeah. Like McDonald's has this string of commercials coming out right now, and it's like nothing about this commercial made me want to eat a French fry or oh, a really? hamburger from there. They didn't even have them in there. They're like promoting this like love thing, and it's like mcdonald's mm, love it and like it's like <laughs> hearts are on the screen everywhere and stuff it's like they're just so bad they're just like trying to like sell you like they're, wow. they're just like oh we're really great and we love everything so come here it's not even like our burgers are the best anymore and yeah it's interesting whatever. how you know comparing commercials across decades and seeing how things have changed and there is an argument that they're dumbing them down that like things are getting dumbed down slogans are dumber uh, well i could get before. through like a half a commercial i don't even know what they're trying to sell me yet i'm like come on i got money <laughs> i want to buy something but you're not selling me anything but and on the like, other hand honda now look i speak from fairly you know being fairly inexperienced the only time i experience commercials is like you're saying if i'm in some place somewhere where, else where, where there is tv one. happens to be on so while on, on one hand commercials can seem more dumbed down like slogans i'm loving it or whatever like are more simplified and kind of dumb than ever but at the same time, some of the commercials are technically brilliant. I mean, the the cinematography, the animation, oh, sure. the uh, you know, the, they're very very persuasive. They look like Hollywood level kind of quality. And sure, course, the people that are working on them are doing high quality work. And uh, you know, like take the Old Spice commercials where there's the the black guy and he's you know going through all kinds of different scenes yeah. and crazies. For one moment he's on a bike and then he's in a pool and then you know it's just so amazing. Like some of them are just mind numbingly great in some ways. Sure. At the same time. So it, it all depends on where they're going. You can tell like the good companies and the bad companies, I think. Because even like in the Old Spice example, like at least then I knew they were trying to sell me deodorant and they were like yeah. trying to tell me that like ours is the best because you can do all this stuff. But like McDonald's is just like, oh, peace and love and everything about us <laughs> is awesome because we're awesome and da 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 da. They don't even say like wow. we got cheeseburgers and stuff. Like, I, where's like, the beef? Like, if you were an alien just dropped here on this planet today and you watched these McDonald's commercials, you'd have no <laughs> idea what you were going to get when you went there. You'd be like, I thought I was going to find happiness, and all you guys have are happy meals. So, so I mean, look, if you're watching TV, Alma or anybody else who watches this thing, and you find yourself feeling upset, same thing for talk radio. You know, if you're listening to shows that are upsetting to you, and you know your your heart rate's picking up, and your pulse is going fast, and you're you're all upset, and you're telling everybody how upset you are. Just turn it off. Don't watch. Don't listen. I mean, there's there's stuff out there. There's so much media now. You know, it's not like before where you could only watch Fox or NBC or something like that. Now there's hundreds of channels. There's thousands of channels on on the internet. More more than you can possibly ever listen to in a lifetime. There's no reason why you can't find something that's enjoyable to listen to or watch these days. Sure. And if you want that stuff, or you still need, because like sometimes it's good to be in the know because sure. you're gonna have conversations like this or other people watch that stuff. You can still get it off the internet. You know, there's gonna be if, if Bill O'Reilly says something amazing, uh, I'm sure there'll be a YouTube clip of it. You can check it out. Uh, there via was the that internet. one clip where he uh, dropped the f bomb. Oh yeah, that's right. We'll do it live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, f uh, it, do it live. Right. That's a pretty good clip. So yeah, you can always get those clips still if you, if if need be, and so no need to have the cable TV. Yeah, I totally agree. And plus, you can save a lot of money too. Like if you cancel your cable, there's this. We talked touched on this a few weeks ago on the show. This K, uh, cord cutters, as they're called. People who, you know, they've grown up with cable television, they've had cable television as adults, and then something inspires them to stop it, and they cut the cord, so oh, to nice. speak, and they cancel their cable subscription. They can make, you know, they might continue with an internet subscription, but yeah. canceling the cable subscription, canceling broadcast, uh, twenty-four hour live stream kind of cable television. Is a huge boon to somebody. You get hours back of your life that you probably, you know, didn't realize you were losing because the average American spends quite a few hours, you know, watching television every single week. So you get those hours back. Now, you know, if you just go and spend those hours on Facebook scrolling, that's obviously not that sure, much better. Sure, or replace it with Netflix. But, you know, you could still argue that Facebook is a little better because then at least you have the chance of interacting with other people you know. That's not happening on television, I guess. But still, you get you get your time back. What you choose to do with that is up to you. Yeah. And uh, you get what a hundred bucks a month. I mean, cable television is not cheap. There, I don't even can, have any idea what it costs. It's can, been so long since well, I've I mean, paid for it. If you want to have the the channels like you know the Comedy Centrals and uh, Showtime or HBO and that kind of thing, you're probably looking at more than a hundred bucks, seventy, eighty, a hundred and twenty bucks a month, somewhere in that right. range. It's not hard 
to spend a hundred dollars a month on just cable television subscriptions. So that's, that's twelve hundred bucks a year. But you that's get only back. three dollars a day. <laughs> it's trying to sell well, it to you. Yeah, I mean, again, if you if you enjoy All it, then these... stick with it. But uh, but if it's upsetting you, why bother? All right. Toll free number is 855 450 free. We've got the story on the Silk Road. That's on the way tonight. Plus, uh, if we get the chance, there's crazy news in Venezuela. Like, we've covered here and there how insane Venezuela is. And now there's the military is stationed outside of grocery stores. We'll explain why. 855 450 free. But coming first. The Silk Road case, why it matters. We'll talk about that. And, of course, you can bring up anything you'd like at 855-450-FREE. Take control here on Free Talk Live or join us via Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. We're here live. It's Sunday, and you can take control. That's why we call it Free Talk Live. More coming up. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. It's the end of year clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We'd rather sell it than count it. So every floor and every store is on sale and it all must go. Get incredible deals on first quality flooring from just 35 cents a square foot. Beautiful three quarter inch pre-finished solid hardwood is just $179. Save even more on all liquidation clearance and closeouts. If it's in stock, it's on sale and pay no interest until January 2017. Don't miss these end of year deals on over 400 floors. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. 
It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday edition of the program. You can take control here toll-free. Coming up, Ross Ulbricht's trial kicks off Tuesday. Why does it matter? Andy Greenberg has uh, some claims that he'll be making over at Wired.com. We'll share those with you. As we continue here, you can bring up anything that you'd like. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. If you like Free Talk Live, one of the things you can do to support the show is shop with us. What you do is you go to shop.freetalklive.com, and you can enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. There's Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, and Amazon US. You just click into the right Amazon for you, and from that point forward... Uh, whatever you buy, Free Talk Live gets a cut up. Now, you have to do it every time you go to Amazon. So one of the ways you can short-circuit the process, take out a couple steps, is go to shop.freetalklive.com, pick the Amazon that's right for you. So if you're in the U.S., pick Amazon U.S. And then as soon as you land on the Amazon site, on the landing page, that front page, bookmark, bookmark it. And then just go back to that bookmark every time you got shopping to do. It helps Free Talk Live out a lot, and you get the same great Amazon deals and service and selection and reviews and everything you're used to. Let's go to your calls and thoughts before we continue on Ross Ulbricht. Randy is in Tennessee. Randy, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Ian. How are you doing tonight? Randy, is this, uh, is this Randy uh, Randall Stroud? This would be him. Hey, welcome to uh, the program. We were talking about you on Thursday night, and I, I understand it uh, that word got to you, and you had some something you wanted to clear up. Yeah, um, I do have a website for people that may or may not know about it. It's called SovereignTactics.org, but the name in and of itself is actually just a coincidence. Uh, the word sovereign, I am not associated with the uh, the sovereign citizen movement, and actually. I love the guy that called in claiming that if you cite UCC 1-308 on your ticket, that it'll be somehow discharged. And he was trying to explain <laughs> to you that if you write this magic code on these tickets, then everything would just disappear. And then you brilliantly shut them down. And I, I greatly appreciate that because there are so many gurus on YouTube they will just tell people, hey, um, if you just cite this UCC code or if you just cite this Supreme Court case, then suddenly the government will just leave you alone. But it's it's total nonsense. And in this sovereign citizen movement, there's a lot of guys, some really big names like um, Dean Clifford. This guy, he pulls in thousands of dollars for seminars and you know different educational tools that he offers. Mm -hmm. And most of it... <laughs> is really just uh, complete nonsense because they're being robbed by this system, and then they're claiming that if you use that same system, you can somehow defeat the people that are trying to kill you and extort you. Well, the biggest um, misinformation out there, one of the biggest problems with these gurus, these courtroom gurus uh, who claim to know all these secret methods to get in and out, you know, to get out of trouble or whatever— is that you know they never actually have the proof. They never um, they they never really have any kind of evidence of their. Yeah, claims. I've never seen like a YouTube video of them in court no. pulling this off. And no, it should be done by now, right? And uh, and you know you mentioned the Dean Clifford guy. I've actually heard of him, uh, Jay, Jay Noon, who's one of the uh, the activists up this way. Who I gave uh, Jay credit because he's actually someone who talks about this stuff and tries to put it into effect. And he's lost right. his house over it. Uh, unfortunately, because the thing the thing that's most important, I think, to what this is what I wanted to say, that the guys who believe in these, for lack of a better term, conspiracy theories, because they're not proven, um, the, the guys who believe and advocate this stuff, they, oh, where was I going to go with that? I'm sorry. So, the, you know, there, there, there's all these proof. claims out there. Yeah, well, there's there's the proof aspect, and they're, they're getting people into some pretty serious situations with the court, 
And of course, they're not held liable for it, right? Because they're not practicing law or anything like that. They're just giving people uh, advice, and in many cases, charging people, uh, you know, hundreds if not thousands of dollars for this guru information that's supposed to save them from all these tickets. And ultimately, what happens is the state never follows their own rules anyway, and that's sort of sort of what a lot of this is predicated upon. Like some of these guys will do hundreds of hours of research and believe they know the system like the back of their hand because they've put so much time in. And it's true. They are certainly more knowledgeable than the average person about what the rules of the system are. But the thing is, they don't follow their own rules. And a lot of people, you don't learn that until you are actually in In court. And then you find out that, oh, crap, they're ignoring their own rules that I thought I could hold them to. But by the time you come to that realization, you've already been charged with contempt of court and you're probably in in custody. Uh, But, Randy, what's your experience been? well, um, it's funny that you mentioned that because you were talking about you know my YouTube channel and you were saying, well, I've seen a lot of videos and Randy just doing a lot of talking and and that is true. Most of my videos is me in front of a camera just you know talking about my experiences. but I do have some footage uh being in the uh, the traffic violations bureau and uh, but actually being in front of the judge, no, I don't have any uh footage of that because it's it's simply not allowed, and uh you, you know you'll be thrown out. But I do have other supportive evidence uh, of me being successful, in, if you wouldn't even call it successful. But from my experience, any type of success or dismissal that you do have, it's less based on the law and it's more based on uh, cost-benefit analysis. You know, on their I've part. worked on and off. Yeah, I've, yeah on their part. And yeah, that's I what I was saying because, like, you know, if as, somebody if somebody wins in court, uh, it may just be because they didn't want to deal with you that you they knew you'd be too much trouble that you're a hard target that kind of thing and that there's no consistency that none of the people with these theories can prove their theories in any consistent. First of all, they never bothered to prove them at all, most of them, and secondly, they certainly wouldn't be able to prove that they work consistently. So even if somebody could come up with one video where it shows them having a judge storm out of court and you know drop the trial drop the charge that doesn't doesn't show that the same thing would happen the second time. Um, so, Randy, tell me something about you know you because like I like I said on the air, I don't know a whole lot about you. You and I we've exchanged a, f- a few words on yeah. Facebook here and there, and that's why I gave you credit as somebody who seems to be an advocate of you know some tactics that I don't I'm not really familiar with. But at least you put it into into play. A lot of these guys just talk talk about it and they try to convince people. What are you advocating that's different from you know the standard court? theory guru. Um, just kind of give me your pitch, you know, your elevator pitch. Well, I've worked on and off as a paralegal for the last couple of years, so um, I, I do know the procedure and the systems pretty well. And I'll go ahead and say this, um, even though I don't have any video evidence of me actually being in front of a judge, you'll just have to take my word for it. But for any cases that I have dismissed, and, I, and I've actually lost cases too, how many gurus are going to admit that? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, Randy Stroud has lost a lot of cases too. But for the cases that I have had dismissed, the judge never even talked to me most of the time in those cases. It was the DA who actually dismissed it, and it was like, no, you know, we're not going to you know, deal with this. This, this is uh, too much. But Give me one example. Me, Give me one example of a success story. Well, I actually wrote um, a very detailed article about the last time I was in court, which was back in uh, late September, um, got pulled over for not having a license, and I went in there and I, I was just flooding their offices with all kinds of, you know, paperwork and just really giving them uh, a headache. <laughs> and then once I got to the to the the courtroom, all of the monitors that were displaying, uh, you know, the courtrooms, you know, telling you know different people where to go, having all their last names listed, their whole computer system was, you know, shut down. So I get to court and I'm actually like 10 or 15 minutes late and I'm like sweating bullets, like oh no. Mm. And I get in there and then. The whole system is just down. I'm like, okay, this is weird, but maybe it's my lucky day. And then I get into the courtroom, and then the judge assigned to my case is on vacation. I'm like, okay, uh, another weird incident. And then they have a new judge come in, and then they did all this trickery where they were changing around courtrooms, and and they were dividing people. And it it was very strange because there was like something around like 326 uh, cases on the docket that day. Jeez. And almost all of them were for driver's licenses. And they called me up there three times and kept asking me, uh, do you have an attorney with you today? And this was my second time going to court for this particular case. 
and each time they kept recessing it. But this last time, they kept calling me up, and they kept asking me if I had an attorney, and I said no. And they said, well, are, are you going to defend yourself? I said, yes, you know, I plan to go forward with this. I have some documents that I'd like to, you know, discuss. And eventually, the last time that they called me up, the DA, she called me up for the third time, and she just said, well, it won't be necessary because your case has been dismissed. I didn't ask any further questions. I walked out of that room. I wanted out of there. But something talked to me in the back of my head. I said, you know what, that's not good enough. I want to know precisely why this was dropped. So I walked back into the courtroom like an idiot, and walked up to the DA and said, I want to know why my case was dismissed. You know, I've been, you know, I've been in court twice already over this particular case, and you've been threatening me with six months of jail time for a driver's license. Now you're suddenly, oh, no, it's not necessary. We're just going to drop it. What happened? And she said, well, um, we can try you again if you really want to go to jail, Mr. Stroud. And then the bailiff came, and I was like, okay, I'll leave. That, that's fine. Hey, Randy, can you hang on? Because I'd like to you know, kind of get a little more from you and have you explain sort of where you're coming from with how you do things in court. Um, and then talk yeah, about definitely. yeah, where you're going from here. So hang on. More with Randall Stroud from Sovereign Tactics. Was it .org, Randy? That is correct. All right, stand by. More coming up on Free Talk Live, Live Sunday show. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, January 9th, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,211, silver at $16.44, and Bitcoin is trading around $297.96. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct. Redefining the way you think about storable food. With civil unrest occurring all across the country, being food secure has never been more important. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, on Thursday, a bill to approve the construction of the Keystone XL oil pipeline passed another barrier in the Senate. The Senate Energy Committee approved the measure with a 13-9 to vote. The bill will go before the full Senate next week, while the House of Representatives is scheduled to vote on Friday. 
A federal judge in California has overturned a ban on the sale of controversial foie gras, duck or goose liver, which has been fattened through force feeding. Foie gras involves deliberately fattening the animals by force feeding corn through a feeding tube. U.S. District Judge Stephen V. Wilson permanently blocked the state attorney general from enforcing a law which banned the practice. Judge Wilson made his decision based on the argument that the federal government's authority trumps the states. Activists from across the political spectrum are organizing a global day of action against the use of torture on January 31st. In response to a lack of media coverage and action from politicians following the release of the Senate report on CIA torture, a number of organizations are calling for rallies and protests across the globe to stand in solidarity with victims of torture. The Anti-Media, the Conscious Resistance Network, the Solutions Institute, and a growing list of activist groups and media outlets are joining the calls for action. Several cities are planning on hosting mock waterboarding and force feeding presentations. Today's broadcast of Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, January 9th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The accused operator of the Deep Web Silk Road Marketplace is set to go to trial. Catherine Bleich has this Liberty Beat special report. Many of you know that in late 2013, the online Bitcoin black market known as the Silk Road was shut down. The alleged founder, Ross Ulbricht, was arrested and charged with conspiracy to traffic drugs, launder money, and even murder for hire in the state of Maryland. This month, he will go on trial for many of these charges in the state of New York. The Liberty Beat is pleased to announce that we will be there to report live from the courtroom the entire first week. With a generous donation from Roger Vare, also known as the Bitcoin Jesus, the Liberty Beats' Derek Bros is one of several activists who have been funded to travel to New York to serve as our eyes and ears. We hope to also send the Liberty Beats' founder and editor-in-chief, John Bush. The two plan to work in tandem as they live blog the courtroom actions, write narrative pieces, interview key people, and create audio media. Help us send our amazing team into the belly of the beast to document this historic trial by visiting thelibertybeat.com backslash support. You can expect the mainstream media to only paint a small part of the picture. Let the Liberty Beat bring you the truth. To learn more about Ross and his case, visit freeross.org. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at mymagicmud.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, visit libertybeat.com backslash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, January 9th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. The nation's quadriplegics immobilize on Washington in support of stem cell research. And a Penn State t-shirt is awkwardly looked away from. And now for the weekly feature your fragile, susceptible mind already has your lips salivating for. This is The Onion Week in Review. Sources reported today that 10-year-old Brandon Thomas, who is currently homesick at his friend Kevin's sleepover, needs to just tough it the f*** out. I don't feel like playing Xbox right now. The pathetic little bitch who claims he just doesn't feel like eating any birthday cake or joining in any activities with his friends, frankly needs to grow a pair because his parents only live 10 minutes away, for Christ's sake. Here's what the whiny pansy had to say for himself. I wasn't crying. It's just allergies. I want to go home. What a f***ing wuss. In other news, a voicemail from mom is deleted three words in, and a man with nice eyes is blown. All right, now off with you. I can't have you seeing me like this. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, the live Sunday edition. Coming up tonight, we will talk more about Ross Ulbricht. That is my intention. The Silk Road trial is about to kick off Tuesday morning. 
and we will have our own Derek J. Freeman. Uh, he's going to be outside of the courthouse doing some outreach. And uh, Michelle Seven, former host of the show, will be inside the courthouse watching the trial. And we're looking forward to hearing from her as to you know kind of give us the inside scoop as to what's happening there. Because you certainly can't count on the mainstream media to cover this story in any accurate manner. Uh, but over at Wired.com, there's a story about why... The Silk Road Trial Matters. And I do want to talk about that, but we're talking with Randy uh, Stroud here. He's from SovereignTactics.org, and uh, he was sort of summoned the other night. We were talking about this guy called Free Talk Live, as happens from time to time. Thankfully, it doesn't happen very often. But every now and then, some one of these court guru people will call in, and they'll start spouting off all these claims about, well, if you want to get out of the, your traffic ticket, you can just file right. this form with the government and write UCC 1-208 on it or whatever, and then they'll just make it go away. Or and, hop on one leg, spin around three times, yeah. walk in the door backwards, and mumble these words. And don't forget to write your name in all caps or right. whatever. And so there's all kinds of these conspiracy, kind of courtroom conspiracies, for lack of a better term, propagated by these guru types who claim to have all this experience at doing this stuff, but yet they can never prove it. They never have even a document from court showing their case getting dismissed, showing what they filed in the, the case and showing it getting dismissed. They certainly don't have any video uh, to prove what they're doing in court. And for all of the supposed gurus who are out there, not a single one of them has come to New Hampshire and shown us all how it's done because you want to get it on video. Just come on out. Uh, Keen it's New easy. Hampshire. We've done it a lot. Yeah, I'm in there all the time recording uh, hearings at uh, at courts. You know, I have no problem getting a video camera into any courtroom in the state. And and, and it was actually Shire Dude who pledged on t- Thursday night. Shire Dude pledged that if somebody comes to Manchester, that he will come to record the trial. I pledge that if the trial's in Keene, that I will come to record that trial. Somebody who wants to prove their little sovereign guru tactics work. There um, you go. Come to New Hampshire. Now, Randy Stroud is somebody who runs a website called SovereignTactics.org. And you are someone who actually, you did not appreciate that guru calling in. You liked the fact that we took that guy uh, to task for coming on the air and making claims. But Randy, tell me what se- what separates you. you. As you already pointed out, you do not claim to be one of these sovereign citizens. So don't people should not confuse you for that particular movement, even though the word sovereign is in uh, the website title. And as I've said, I like the idea of sovereignty. I think the idea of being your own king of your own world is a fine thing. Um, but, uh, you know, the idea of a sovereign citizen is contradictory from the get-go because obviously you can't yeah. be both a sovereign and a citizen at the same time. So, you know, what is it that uh, that you advocate? Obviously, there's a lot of information on your website and, you know, not everybody listening is going to take the time to go and digest it all. So can you make it a little bit more, I guess, break it down? Like what, what do people need to know? What is it that you're spreading that's different from some of these uh, guru types out there? Well, um, like I was saying earlier, I have actually worked as a paralegal for the last few years, you know, and a lot of these gurus absolutely have no experience being in court. Um, most of them, I can't speak for all of them because I'm, you know, I'm not psychic, but mm-hmm. I would say that most of them have never even been in a courtroom, Yeah, at least not for themselves, um, maybe going with a family member or something, but most of these gurus have never been to court, and they're simply watching other people's videos and then making second-hand knowledge and passing it off as their own. So, Almost what, every what time one of them calls in, I like to ask that question of, have you ever actually tried the things you're advocating? The majority of them have not, and they've never been to court. There are a handful of them exactly. who will claim that they have done it and that they've done it successfully, but of all of those, there's no evidence that they can show they prove can't prove it. that they've done it successfully. So that's been my experience the talking other times, to these guys. A few times that I've, I would actually say that I believed the individual with whatever amount of proof they've given me. I think it still comes down to the case that I think a lot of cop blockers find themselves in is that um, there isn't anything that really, like, you didn't do the right dance or the right lettering or whatever that's got them to stop. But they, the, the enforcers themselves, the courts, the judge, the cops, whoever it might be that you're using the your your tactics on are tired of you, and so they, they leave you alone. You know, like mm-hmm. Keen Police here, for example, you know, they do their jobs, you know, like when they have to. But for the most part, they would, you know, I drove around Keene for my first two years here without a license. I'm pretty sure they knew it in a big black mm. and yellow RV. <laughs> they just didn't want to be on YouTube, you know. And so 
uh, it's being a, t- a hard target. At some, some point, extent. yeah, it's yeah. like they don't want the hassle. So like, it's not to uh, it's not to say that like maybe this story is true from a person, but what they don't tell you is that it was like years of them doing this stuff that like they just got tired of like okay, we'll leave this guy alone. We'll go for the easy. You know, so you, so Randy, you've got experience in court. You've got experience with the law. Um, you've actually been to trial. You've, you know, you've actually been in court and you've tried some, you know, some uh, some unique ideas. Uh, what I mean, what do you recommend for the the newbie out there? I mean, what what is what is, should people know? What should people take away from SovereignTactics.org? Well, what should people what what people should realize is that a court case is really. Ninety percent about um, customer service, believe it or not, and only about ten percent about actual laws and procedures. You know, um, you can have all the knowledge in the world. Of, you, you know, you can memorize the entire UCC if you want to, which is God. I don't. I don't know how many pages long. That's but the that's Uniform Commercial you. Code is what that stands for, and there's a bunch of conspiracy right. theorists out there who have various different conspiracies regarding that. But essentially, UCC, as I understand it, is for you know corporations and companies and like different rules on how they are supposed to interact with one another and in, in doing business or something, right? Correct. And what really bothers me about a lot of these uh, you know sovereign citizen types is. Some of what they're saying does have some truth into it. Like, right. for example, people's identities are, in fact, being monetized and turned into legal corporations. You know, your your social security card, you know, your legal name, it is being treated like a corporation. But knowing that information doesn't really help you win a court case. Like, it, it kind of is what it is. And knowing that information isn't going to you know, when you a court case. So if you go into court and you say, well, I don't recognize that name or that corporation, they're going to say, well, we're saying that's who you are and you better deal with it. And then yeah. what does the sovereign citizen do at that point? He, you know, he, he buckles down yeah, and you stammer and get arrested. <laughs> it, exactly. Contempt and a lot of, of these uh, sovereign citizen types, they, they advocate for the common law. I would agree that common law is you know, a little bit less intrusive and better than, you know, the statutory laws that we have now. But even under the common law, you are still subject to uh, eminent domain. The government can just say, hey, you know what, we're going to take your property because we want to build a highway through here, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can take the money or um, Mm -hmm. we can arrest you. And that's under the common law. I mean, plus, good luck going into any courtroom in America or in any of the Western courts and uh, in saying, I would like to be in a common law jurisdiction. Sir, this is an admiralty court and I will not be crossing the bar. What do you, you think know? Burke would say to you if you said that to him here in Keene? Like, you'd be in contempt of court so contempt. fast. Yeah, for sure. What do you think, Randy? Well, I, I want to kind of change the direction of the conversation and, and talk about evidence. Mm-hmm. Uh, earlier you were talking about a lot of these gurus don't, you know, have videos or documentation or anything that they've been through. I have a lot of documentation, and one of my favorite videos is of me being pulled over. It was on July 4th. I was on my way to an armed march on the Capitol here in Nashville, Tennessee, and I have video of that also. We actually did make it to the protest, but on the way there, we were pulled over, and we recorded the interaction. And the uh, police officer pulled me over for not having my headlights on in the middle of the day. Uh, because there was a light drizzle, and I ended up not giving him my name or my social security number. I didn't give him anything, and he let me go. Now, does that mean that I, you know, spouted off some magical, you know, UCC commercial code? No, that officer simply just didn't want to bother with me. It's all discretionary. And do you, do you have one of their licenses? People, did uh, Did you give him that, or you gave him nothing? The only thing that I gave him was. Um, well, it actually wasn't my car. I was married at the time, and it was my wife's car. And I gave him an expired um, insurance card, and that was all I gave him. And he ended up letting me go. And Randy, I I've heard rumors. That. I've heard rumors you might move to New Hampshire. Are those rumors true? There is some truth in that. Well, I hope you do, because I think that, you know, you're one of the few out there who really seems to kind of put your ideas into action and you do your best to document it. And I'd love to help you with that because we can get cameras into court here. We'll come back with more. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. 
Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Don't worry about things you can't control. Isn't that what they always say? But it's about impossible to avoid worrying about what's going on these days. The government has used the war on guns, the war on drugs, and the war on terrorism to tear our Bill of Rights to shreds. But you can fight back. The Tenth Amendment Center has proven it, racking up major victories. For example, when the U.S. government claimed authority in the NDAA to have the military kidnap and detain Americans without trial, the nullifiers got a law passed in California, declaring the state's refusal to ever participate in any such thing. Their latest project is offnow.org, nullifying the National Security Agency. They've already gotten model legislation introduced in California, Arizona, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas, meant to limit the power of the NSA to spy on Americans in those states. We'd be fools to wait around for the U.S. Congress or courts to roll back Big Brother. Our best chance is nullification and interposition on the state level. Go to offnow.org, print out that model legislation, and get to work nullifying the NSA. The hero Edward Snowden has risked everything to give us this chance. Let's take it. Offnow.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. And you can get interactive in a variety of ways on the website. So enjoy that. Again, that's freetalklive.com. Also, if you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. They will encrypt your internet connection. All you have to do is download their free software. 
from proxpn.com slash FTL. It's there for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices. And those of you with Linux, it's possible to get set up with ProXPN. It's just a different process that you have to go through for Linux users. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go grab the software. Get it installed. Start for free. You can test out the service. If you like it, you'll want to upgrade to their premium account where you get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. It's an incredibly handy tool for privacy and it's available to you for just about five bucks a month just a little less than five bucks i think 4.99 or something like that when you actually do the the division on the annual account because we're going to get you 50 percent off which is what brings that price down just below five bucks a month so use code ftl50 when you're ready to upgrade at proxpn.com slash ftl they encrypt your internet connection so your internet service provider won't know what you're doing online anymore as soon as you start using proxpn go check it out at proxpn.com slash ftl and don't forget promo code ft L50, and there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and you'll get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. ProXPN.com slash FTL, code FTL50. We've got Randy Stroud on the line with us here from SovereignTactics.org. And one of the things I like about you, Randy, is that, you know, you're honest to the point where you'll, you're not making any claims saying that, oh, if you follow what I suggest, you're going to get out of a ticket, right? Like you've pointed out that you've won some, you've lost some. And uh, the ones you've lost, you feel it's because you're just too much of a hassle for the system. I mean, does that kind of sum up what you've been saying? More or less. And a lot of my tactics also are based around uh, getting third, a lot of third parties involved. Like I'm not sure if you and your listeners are familiar with uh, Mark Stevens. I yes. know you are. Um, Mark has been involved in you know a, a lot of you guys' activism, and I like a lot of what he's uh, advocating and a lot of his tactics and a lot of things that he's talking about. But I guess since my time as being a paralegal, I'm a bit more administrative. So instead of going directly to the judge and trying to deal with them directly. I may talk to the parole board or I may talk to uh, one of the senior DAs who isn't even necessarily involved in the case itself because the courts themselves do not want to be embarrassed. They do not want to be made a mockery of because if they're if they allow themselves to be made a mockery of, mm -hmm. then their whole scam goes up in flames. Well, and you can see that you know? happening here in New Hampshire, like, for instance, where if they have a free stater in for a court trial, a lot of times they'll it's wait over. till the very end and there's nobody else left in court and then they'll call. Right, or it puts you in a whole other room by yourself, right. which is happening to me a lot in <laughs> Manchester. They're like, you all go over there and then you just come over here. Yeah, because the numbers... Well, down, go ahead. Uh, down here in the South, uh, things are a little bit different, too. Uh, people down here are, mm -hmm. are very religious. So I kind of had this scare tactic that I like to use. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of uh, Title 42, Section 666 of the Federal Code. Are you guys familiar with this? No, I'm not. Well, it basically says in a roundabout way that you can't get a job or travel or do anything unless you have a Social Security number. And I, I, I thought that was pretty uh, – pretty ominous and and uh, you know controversial that the name of the law has 666 in it and, and i myself i'm not very religious but i know that other people are so oh, it yeah. may be a little bit it may be a, a bit manipulative and some people don't like this tactic but i'm like hey you guys are claiming to be religious well it looks like the mark of the beast right here and then all of a sudden <laughs> then yeah, they're paying the attention like, <laughs> yeah, yeah and every, everyone everyone in the pews and the audience they're like wait, is what they got saying true? You know, and I'm living in the South, you know, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly they're like, whoa, whoa, sit back down. You know, <laughs> like they don't want to hear that. So I actually love to use religion and kind of uh, find the correlations with anarchism and voluntarism, because in the Bible, there are a lot of references and in, in, in kind of, you know, uh, roundabout ways that anarchism is, is kind of promoted in, in weird ways, believe it or not. So, so whatever bridge, whatever bridge that you can find mm. to bring a connection to people to the ways of voluntarism, I think we should use it. Well, I agree with that, and that's one of the reasons why I moved to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. I'm also originally from the South, and uh, you know, I, it's just so hard to make an impact in places that are not New Hampshire. I mean, there's just so many people here. It's there's nothing quite like. Being in a courtroom full of people where half of the people are people you know, 
uh, who've come to watch a trial and have have that half of the courtroom stay completely seated as a judge walks into the room. I mean, there's just no feeling quite quite like that. That doesn't happen anywhere else I've ever been. No, and uh, and here it does happen, and it's so cool because you know, like you said, Randy, they don't want the people to find out, you know, that their system is a scam. And they certainly don't want anybody to make fun of it, you know, in the in the court. And that's a nice silent way to show your disrespect for this ridiculous, aggressive system. And it's also one that can catch on, too. I've seen folks in a courtroom where they are not liberty activists. They are not known to anybody. They're just in the courtroom because, and they happen to call one of our cases early. They don't always wait to the end. Sometimes they'll call us first, which I've never been able to figure out why they do that. But uh, sometimes they'll call our cases first. But anyway, when the judge walks in, if there's enough activists in that court to where they're the majority of the audience, you'll start seeing average people staying seated as well, which is really fun. And that's where I think the value comes into a lot of this stuff. Like, I'm all for whatever tactics people want to use, but I think, like, on video, trolling the states, like, doing whatever you want to do in court, like, I don't understand, ask a lot of questions, you know, and and, uh, uh, dehumanizing or, you know, humanizing these folks mm-hmm. to other people is a, is a real sense of value. And so whatever means it might be, but I, like not rising, like when uh, Pete and I were on the road and we would visit other people that are in courts at other places and we wouldn't stand for a judge. They'd be like, what are, <gasps> what are you, you doing? doing? And so, and but that, then I've heard later that they don't do that now and it's like mm, grows. And so caught on. Yeah. Essentially, you know, you do that in a small step, but a lot of other steps and, you know, you could have a very effective way at like. You know, ending the authority of the state. You know, they're used to a lot of compliance, and you know, if they start getting a little pushback, uh, you know, it can work wonders more so than maybe the it's UCC stuff. Funny. It's funny that you mentioned that because I do have a YouTube video with uh, with me and my brother, and we're trolling the traffic violations bureau that collects the payments for traffic tickets. We go into court, and he's fighting a seatbelt ticket, and it's his very first time going to court. We you know we trained for a couple of weeks to try to get him prepared, and he actually did a really good job. He had the police officer committing perjury over and over. But then my brother, he ended up getting kind of nervous, and the judge asked him if he had any further questions. And he kind of prematurely said yes, and he pretty much forfeited the case without realizing it. But he did a really good job. I was very proud of him. But then afterwards, the ticket ended up being $150. So we said, you know what? We're going to pay and change. Mm-hmm. And we have all this you know, documented on video. It's on YouTube. So we go in to the Traffic Violations Bureau. And they say, well, our policy is you can only pay with 25 of each coin, 25 (laughs) quarters, 25 nickels, so on and so forth. So, you know, after a while, it wasn't enough money. So we had to come back over and over and make like 15 transactions to to pay the actual (laughs) amount. And they were pissed. Randy, keep in touch, will you? I I think what you're doing is interesting. I appreciate you putting it out there. And we'll look forward to seeing you here in New Hampshire because things get a lot more fun when you get numbers on your side. And uh, then we can also document the process, whatever it is that happens. Thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate it. You guys, you guys are awesome. Right I on. love you. Ian. There's more coming up. It's Free Talk Live. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused nice with the latest me. nutraceutical science. Really Introducing the all new ancient defense too, herbal like, immunity blend, exactly crafted like that, with over 14 key ancient, like ancient like herbs and extracts to supercharge yeah. and prepare your body for yeah. what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. Year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. 
It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime, 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You dial in toll-free here and bring up anything you want. 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. Don't forget, Skype is also an option for you. If you've got it, you can call us with Skype. In fact, there is a Skype app for cell phones to where you will upgrade your call quality. If you've got, if you've got a good data signal, you can call us on Skype, and then you'll sound like you're on a decent microphone. You won't sound like you sound like you're on the phone, so <laughs> it'll be better. Uh, so go and connect with us on Skype at username lrn.fm. We'll get you on the air to talk about what you want. And don't forget, uh, you can join us online at freetalklive.com anytime. Let's go to Al. He's listening in Bangor, Maine. Al, you're on, I think you're listening to WNZS, right? Yes. Go ahead, sir. The purpose of the media is to misinform the people and rob them of the knowledge of their origin and their destiny, which they need to fulfill their existence, the purpose why they were created. When you and say the media, what do you mean? Well, the media primarily is centered in New York City and Los Angeles. is primarily an instrument of control to control the masses like a herd of cattle and to convince them that the government the government in Washington D.C. is really in power when it's not in power at all there's another power behind that which controls the masses okay wait wait let me guess let me guess okay i'm going to guess um the british crown and the pope no no oh, well, i going to guess wanna... I, I was going to go the same route okay but... all right well I mean, there's what... There's still the Illuminati we could go with, or like the Ross. Well, you're being facetious about it because you have to ridicule it because it's true, and you don't want this information. Lizard to come people. The people. Lizard. Lizard people. If, if you Aliens? know Jeffrey Epstein, you could call him a lizard person, if you will. Jeffrey Jeffrey Epstein is a billionaire. 
Now, are you going ago, to hold, hold on? Okay, so you're you're actually going there. You're going to suggest Jewish people are the aliens or lizard are the people? The ones who are in control. Well, I'll give you the facts, and you make draw your own conclusions. That's where you're going with this. Well, let's, let's Jeffrey the Epstein is a billionaire, and he has so. uh, at his estate uh, the underage girls, et cetera. And he he counts among his visitors. Who does he has for visitors, gentlemen? Oh, is I this this? Know. Oh, okay. I've seen some of the headlines. Is this the guy that's been in the headlines recently for having Bill Clinton in his Rolodex or something like that? Yeah, and Bill he's, Clinton. He's had uh, he's had sexual speed, interactions uh, allegedly with uh, some Prince, underage Prince Andrew, teenage Prince girls. Andrew. Oh, no, yeah. not not alleged. It's been he's convicted of it. Prince Andrew, Alan Dershowitz, uh, Katie Couric. Okay, so what are you getting at? So Katie this Kirk, guy, what is Charlie he, a media Rose, guy? I'm telling you What's he do? who controls the government from behind the scenes. Who? And essentially you are on the same side as the government. With Hold on your a second. Emphasis on, no, yeah. I'm not. i completely anti-state. I believe in liberty. Pro-freedom. The, the individual. Now, wait sure. a minute. Let's let, Why don't you just come right out and say it? Who's behind the government? What are you suggesting the, here? The ideology, the ideology of 1776. Is your ideology the ideology no. of the government, freedom, democracy? It's a 300 year old ideology. What it does, it allows the financial powers, when there are no other values in society, the ruling power, the dominant power becomes money and finance capital. Now, you look, the biggest force for democracy around the world, who is promoting the system of government we have, is Hillary Clinton. She's the head of multiple uh-huh. international associations which promote our system of government around the world. I don't have a system mind. of government, sir. I believe in self-government. If you want to apply me to any kind of governing, that is the only one I accept. So I will not accept whatever system you're talking about. Sure, but liberty. Why don't you just come right out and say it? I mean, I don't. I don't want to put words in your mouth, Al. Are you suggesting that it's people who uh, that it's the bankers who are in charge, or is it only Jewish bankers? Are you uh, are you a bigot, or are you just hate bankers? I'm saying that from a uh, sociological, and you're calling name calling now, like typical liberal. I didn't call you a name. So sociologic, from a sociological standpoint, once you take away all the values in society, religion, etc., then the financial the power of money, uh, and the proof of this, I think it's bankers. Okay, so is it bankers? Can you just be straight with me, Al? I mean, I'm asking you a straight question. So you're saying it's the bankers who are behind the government, that, that they're the true power, it's not the politicians in D.C.? Is that what you're saying? Oh, certainly. Financial okay. community in New York City. Okay, because no th- for a moment there I thought you might have been a bigot and like you know bigoted against Jewish well, people. You're so. saying cons- conspiracy theory, but I gave you the case of Jeffrey Epstein, who has Prince Andrew, and he uh, controls these people from behind the scenes. Now the idea. Well, I don't know who that guy is. I mean, yeah, I don't know what he does. What does he do? Media, does he well, is he a, is he a media guy? This Epstein guy? I know nothing oh, about absolutely. him except for the headlines. He, he's controlling all aspects of the society. And how does he own these things? Does he have oh, power by and blackmail? Army? By blackmail. Huh? Blackmail and character assassination. Well, wait a minute. Is Epstein them? a banker or is he an entertainment guy? What's his deal? He's an investment banker. Okay. And so he's wealthy from investment banking, and he uses his wealth to control people yes. in other forms. And he funded this. Listen, gentlemen, this may be one of the most important things you ever hear in your life. So make an <laughs> okay, effort to easy. understand Let's it. Hear it. He funded Epstein, funded the Department of Evolution at Harvard University. He made the study of evolution a separate, uh, a separate department at Harvard so University. So what? Well. If, What's the significance what in this? What do you, you got against you evolution? About, don't you talk about government on your show? Sure. But Plato Plato said, and we're talking 2,500 years ago, the great political philosopher Plato said that people who teach uh, that the universe happens at random, everything happens by chance, and that there is no God, this is not Alan Bangor, this is the philosopher Plato, they do so in order to control the masses. Now, so hold on. So what God, you're saying is that people, is pro- just to clarify what pro- you're saying here, Al, you're saying that people who 
don't believe in God are trying to control the masses. That is what Plato taught 2,500 years ago. And then I gave you proof of that. I said Epstein funded the part. But department don't the people who have... believe in God also try to control the masses? I mean, isn't that the point of no, uh, organized not, religion? Not, not in the same way. Absolutely not in the uh, same way. Yeah, I don't think. I think you should probably review history on that. Thanks for the call tonight, Al. Appreciate hearing from you. Uh, yeah, lots of organized religions have essentially been just the, an excuse to control people. I mean, people historically had been uneducated. They, you know, didn't know anything. You know, they'd never been to any kind of schooling. Uh, and so the religions would step in and give them answers to life's big questions like, you know, what's thunder? You know, what's that noise coming from the sky? Well, it's Jesus or whatever it is. <laughs> You know, they always had some sort of answer, and it was always something supernatural. And that was a way to placate uh, the masses, give them something to believe in, and distract them from the fact yeah. that the church was I, taking all of their property. I think at the best case scenarios, the religions might have been, <laughs> at the best case scenario, they started with good intention. Yes, and I yet, think so. Uh, you know, maybe two, three, whatever rounds, generations, whatever people into it, you know, they become quite convenient. You know, it was a way to either A, explain something to like that's unexplainable or B, mm -hmm. control something that somebody doesn't, you know, like wouldn't well, do normally. And so you'd be like, well, God doesn't want you to go do that. Well, if people believe the story that you're telling about how, you know, God is the reason for all of these things that you have questions about, if people buy into that, then they're going to buy everything else that uh, that you're selling as well. And exactly. You know, give us 10% of your income or 20% or give us right. your farm or- And work you know, for me and yeah. uh, hey- and so I'm not. I don't want to make it sound like I'm trashing religion. I mean, I'm a, a minister in the Shire Free Church, but <laughs> but organized religion historically, uh, as you pointed out, Adamo, when it gets too big, it gets out of control. And I think that you know, like the Buddhists, for instance, which technically isn't really a religion, but has kind of become one. Like the, the Buddha had said that he's not a deity, that he's not a god, and should not be worshipped. But yet there are there are people who do it. Ver variants of Buddhism where he's treated like a you know god type. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. You can take control here. This is Free Talk Live. It's the end of year clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We'd rather sell it than count it. So every floor and every store is on sale, and it all must go. Get incredible deals on first quality flooring from just 35 cents a square foot. Beautiful three-quarter inch pre-finished solid hardwood is just $179. Save even more on all liquidation clearance and closeouts. If it's in stock, it's on sale, and pay no interest until January 2017. Don't miss these end-of-year deals on over 400 floors. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Time are different than they were when Geico started saving people money over 75 years ago. Everybody takes photos of their food nowadays. You can bet none of us kids would snap pictures of mom's tuna casserole surprise. To this day, we don't know what the surprise was, nor do we want to. We didn't always have tasty food, but we always had great car insurance with Geico. Geico, saving people money on car insurance for over 75 years. Hi, I'm George Norrie from Coast to Coast AM. I recently learned about a very unusual pharmacist who does not advocate use of prescription drugs, except in rare circumstances, say when powerful antibiotics are needed to kill a potentially lethal infection, such as pneumonia or staph. Instead, pharmacist Ben Fuchs from Boulder, Colorado, suggests always giving the body all the nutrients it needs to survive, thrive, escape illness, and live younger and longer. I don't think you will find anyone who knows more about how the body works and can explain it in such a delightful and entertaining way. Ben has recorded some very useful health nugget minutes that are available 24-7 online at criticalhealthnews.com. I invite you to log on to criticalhealthnews.com, listen to these pharmacist Ben health nuggets, and maybe even interact with Ben via chat or email. You're going to love Pharmacist Ben online at criticalhealthnews.com. Are you a sneezer? If you're not, 
can you get close to one? I don't literally mean someone sneezing. Sneezer, as defined by marketing guru Seth Godin, is an opinion leader. When a sneezer mentions something, other people catch what Godin calls the idea virus. Seth Godin says some people are more likely to tell their friends about a great new idea. So identifying and courting sneezers is a key success factor for idea merchants. His book, Unleashing the Idea Virus, is the most downloaded ebook in history, and you can download the whole book free. That's how he's making his idea contagious. Click tips, tricks, and other stuff to help you cut through the clutter at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and you can dial toll-free to bring up anything you'd like at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That's Again, 855 free With you tonight, you've got Ian here. And a demo. A demo's here courtesy of copblock.org. We will, of course, take your calls about anything. Coming up, the Ross Ulbricht trial is set to kick off Tuesday morning. Activists are already heading toward New York City in Manhattan, where the federal district court is located. And we'll be hearing from them, I hope, throughout the week to give us updates uh, starting Tuesday night from what's happening with the case, the Silk Road case. Uh, according to Andy Greenberg over at Wired.com, this is an important trial, and we'll go over his points on why he says the Silk Road trial matters here in a moment. You can, of course, take control of the airwaves here and bring up anything you'd like. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. So, uh, but real quick, I wanted to go back to what Al uh, was talking about there in in Maine, because it was just most of the call was me just trying to figure out what Al was getting at. And one of the claims he did make was that, you know, the media is controlling people and this and that. And which is a common kind of conspiracy, sure. right? Sure. Like, I wonder if it's direct or an unintended consequence, but either way. An unintended consequence of what? Well, of like, uh, you know, slave world is what I would limit. I would call it in a nutshell. So basically like all these poor decisions accumulated into one, you know, creating an unintended consequence. Or yeah. maybe they're good decisions in their mind, but a poor decision in mine. Well, yeah. I mean, but these they, actions. You they know? went to government school too, right? Like most of the media people went to government yeah. school and they went to government college and then that's how they got educated. So it's right. no surprise. It's when no they, surprise, right? It's, it's a, they're chugging along not the uh, on the track just as they should, right? But uh, the conspiracy, of course, is not that the individual reporters are in on it, that it's the people who are at the top right. who are... Trickling you know, it down. They're Right. They're controlling information. They're not allowing certain stories on the air. I mean, the uh, how high level, you know, how, uh, at what level, you know, does the news editor of the newspaper, is he in on the conspiracy to control everything? Uh, probably not, but you know the 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 claim is that you know Ted Turner he owns all this stuff and there's only three owners of all the different media corporations and things like that, and you know it's an interesting thing and there's some certainly some evidence for the ownership and all that obviously you can trace ownership and find out who owns what, sure. but at the same time I mean doesn't the fact that Free Talk Live exists and that we're on 150 radio stations, many of which are owned by two of the largest, you know, several of them are owned by what was formerly known as Clear Channel and Cumulus Broadcasting. These are the two largest broadcasters in the United States. These guys are airing a show 
Some of them in uh, we were on a clear channel station in Huntsville, WBHP, seven nights a week. You know, so some of them, it's not just like we're some kind of weekend show. Some of them were on all the time. I mean, they're airing a show that is explicitly anti-state and, you know, anti the system or the status quo. And we're not one of those righty or lefty red show versus blue side kind of situations. We're not promoting that viewpoint here at all. So, I mean, doesn't the fact that we exist sort of negate this grand overarching conspiracy that well you know, i don't know if it negates ignorant? it i think that uh it i mean like diamonds in the roughs are like you know would they you know would the people who run these channels and forms you know that that post your affiliates or your show uh allow you into a prime time slot with like over x at y z viewers uh to me, I hope so, and, and eventually, but I think the one co- component to that would be that there would have to be a major shift in everyone's mind for that to happen. Like, they have to be fed up with who's filling those slots now, and yeah. uh, that w- that would eventually happen uh, in my mind. But I don't know if, like, hopefully some of them take the risk, right, and, like, sure. do whatever. But I think, uh, y- like, back to, like, the unintended consequence or does this negate that it, it's a, it, that it happens, I think if you had, like, a really ambitious reporter who was, like, going to just, like, report facts – in the news, mm-hmm. well, I think the news is such a rat race. Like, you know, what comes over the wire and who covers it the best? And they're all fighting over the same story that, like, if somebody tried to think outside the box, you know, it's just as simple as that, that, like, they'd be shot down for that. And so if, like, some program director wanted to throw you into a hot slot, you know, think outside the box, they'd be shot down for that because it's a grind world, you know? I think there's an argument for what you're making, right? Like, uh, like when we were working for Clear Channel, so when, when Free Talk Live started, we started on a Clear Channel talk right. station. And they were going to promote the show to Afternoon Drive, and they were going to move us over to their AM station. So Clear Channel started us on an FM talk station. That station got blown out of the water. It got flipped back to a music format. Okay. And, you know, that wasn't because of us. It was because, you know, they, they claimed they could sell the right? format. Yeah. And, um, well, anyway, so they promised us, oh, we're going to bring you guys back. We're going to retool the AM station, and you guys are going to be the afternoon drive. You're going to be the local show on the station. And it sounded good, right? Like, right. It sounded good. It didn't end up panning out. They ended up putting Sean Hannity on instead of us oh. in that slot. I ended up getting a severance package and being removed from the uh the cluster of stations after having worked there for six years oh and which was fine you know right you know. maybe nowadays yeah i mean well, a lot of times you you lose a job it's the best thing that can happen to you you just have to look for the other opportunities that are opening up one door closes and another opens, one opens that that's kind of right thing. um so you know it worked out fine because it allowed us to you know sort of free free talk live if you will clear channel never owned the so-called intellectual property we just were a show on their radio station in Sarasota, Florida. Nobody thought to sign a contract with us or anything right. like that. So, you know, we took the whole idea of Free Talk Live and we went and walked we, with it. We got on another radio station in town. Um, but I guess the reason I was telling that story is that, yeah, we were too outside of the box, I think. Uh, the, the the powers that be in Tampa who were kind of in charge of that region of, of programming, we're from Sarasota, I'm from Sarasota originally in Florida. It's the West Coast, just south of Tampa. So the Tampa Clear Channel bosses were the ones that were in charge there. And, and we were too unusual, I think, for their tastes, and they didn't want to see that happen. Right, so but, in that format, there would probably be like a cap for you, right? Like this is the best you can get. You're like, yeah. you're like you Look at Howard Stern's kind of like rise to right. his talk show, you know? You know, like he was knocking that down in a different, you know, he, he had whatever, like shock radio, but you know, it, it's similar. I think at some point you might cap out or you would really need a mental paradigm. Well, we would have been able to get like, yeah, even if we had gotten on afternoon drive on that AM station, which was a little crappy AM in Sarasota, <laughs> even if we had done that, then, uh, you know, we probably never would have gone anywhere from there. Clear Channel never would have offered us a syndication agreement or anything like that. We'd have been dead in the water, uh, ultimately. I mean, even if we could have made it work locally, odds are good it never would have become a, a national show. And so probably it's one of the best things that happened is that, you know, Clear Channel couldn't see the vision then. But once we started doing Free Talk Live for a number of years as a syndicated show, You know, we became known in the industry. We started going to these uh, industry conventions, which, of course, our listeners help fund those things through the Free Talk Live AMP program, which you can join for five bucks a month at amp.freetalklive.com and get some perks. But, you know, you start to get to know people in the business and uh, somebody takes a chance on you. 
at some point. It was it was Phil Tower in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. He was our first Clear Channel station to take the show. He put us on his smaller station. He programs two stations, two, two talk stations there. One of them's a 50,000 or 20,000 watt AM blowtorch, kind of badass big old AM signal. And the other one's, you know, a couple thousand watts. Right. So we got on the smaller one on Saturday nights, and we've been on there ever since. It hasn't been a problem. And, you know, that's through other program directors who've taken over the station since Phil was there. He's actually back there now. But, uh, yeah, it hasn't been a problem, and since then, one takes the show. That means it's okay for the others to take the and show, And doing right? like dominoes. And, yeah, and so now we've got several uh, clear channel stations. Now they call themselves iHeartMedia, which I think is a better name for their company. But uh, my point being that if there was this big conspiracy designed right, they to they wouldn't keep let up, you exist at all, right? right. It would be, like, be like in the protocol, like, smash this guy, yeah, he's got to go. Yeah, word would have gotten up. I mean, like, word would have gotten to the master at the top, like, this Phil Tower guy in Grand Rapids added these, these vol- voluntarists, and we got to get this show off the air well that but here's happened. another thing that i've thought about and to bring i'll throw in alex jones with it right and so like some people would say this too like well alex jones he's right on you know and then like mm-hmm. some people are like well why do they let him exist like why would they let him spout this stuff about the man and he's a CIA cat? plant well that i guess maybe he's intended that's another <laughs> angle of it but you know to me that's it's the like conspiracy about alex jones we ever see the the movie the village right and they these people are dressing up like monsters to scare the people into compliance you know i haven't seen that no. oh well i've uh, my, spoiler alert okay. my bad <laughs> um well essentially in the village like these people are afraid to leave this secure area with okay. a fence because there's these bad things out there okay. right and so like and like for a while it was fine just to say there was bad things out there but eventually people needed to see bad things and so right. they had to do whatever and so like uh, is alex jones or is free talk live allowed to exist to create you know the, the fear aspect. It's so like then, like every now and then, they're like, "Oh, we need someone to make an example out of." Grab one of these people. I, I see where you're Here's coming a from. There's a pool of people to make an example out it's of. To keep the- it's certainly true that Alex Jones deals in fear. I mean, there's no doubt about that. That's the that's kind of the one of the surrounding or the major thrusts of his well, I get show. It, but- he, he deals in fear, but I'm saying is like if, if if the government was just everyone bought everything they're saying and everyone was just like like walking around like, "Oh, I'm so happy and compliant." At some point, that might fade. But like if they have something to point to every now and then to say. This is why you need to be in line. This is why you need to be in line. Like, you know, government never co- becomes utopic. I you see know? what you're saying. It, it's well, the but, yin and the yang. But we it's give needed. solutions on Free Talk Live, right? Like, hey, you can move to New Hampshire. You can join with other people who think like you. It's sort of, we're more of a beacon in that way than I think Alex Jones, which is basically scaring people into doing nothing. 855 450 free Ross Ulbricht's trial. We'll talk about it coming up. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Tweyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kingdom the Shire, Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, January 11th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.52 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,223 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $278. Antiwar.com reports, while smaller than its sister city of the Gaza Strip side of the border, Rafah, Egypt has long been an important city in the northern portion of the Sinai Peninsula of economic and strategic import. Friday, Egypt began displacing the residents of Rafah with a plan to eradicate the entire city, expelling thousands of families and demolishing every home as part of a plan to create a two-kilometer buffer zone between Sinai and the Gaza Strip. Egypt demolished significant numbers of homes back in October to create a 500-meter buffer, but has since decided to expand that to encompass materially the entire city. They have claimed Sinai rebels who have resisted the junta since the 2013 coup are using in Gaza to resupply. The Sinai government denied that the plan amounted to the destruction of Rafah, claiming Egypt would rebuild a new Rafah a couple kilometers west of the old one. Whether anyone will choose to live there with policy established that anything near the border might get wiped out for dubious military reasons remains to be seen. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports two protesters were arrested at the McLean, Virginia home of former Vice President Dick Cheney on Saturday after 20 demonstrators, some in orange prison jumpsuits, walked onto his property to mark the 13th anniversary of the opening of the Guantanamo Bay prison. The protesters from the anti-war group Code Pink walked up to the house before police arrived and asked them to leave, according to Fairfax County Police spokesman Roger Henriquez. Two members who refused to go were arrested on trespassing charges. Police identified the two as Tyg Berry and Eve Tetaz, 57 and 83 years old respectively, both of Washington, D.C. The pair faced misdemeanor charges of trespassing and disorderly conduct. Another Code Pink group demonstrated without incident outside the home of CIA Director John Brennan, also in the Washington, D.C. suburb of McLean, as part of the Guantanamo Anniversary Weekend Torturers Tour. Cheney has defended the CIA use of harsh interrogation techniques on terrorist suspects in the aftermath of the September 11, 2001 attacks, which killed more than 3,000 people in New York and Washington, D.C. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports it seems police in New York are intent on looking the other way when it comes to minor offenses. On New Year's Eve, officers with the New York City Police Department failed to issue a single citation in Times Square. One million partygoers, zero tickets. The only low-level arrest made in Times Square on New Year's Eve were subway-related. Not a single reveler was cited for possession of an open alcohol container or public urination. There were also zero tickets written for double parking or public drunkenness. Zero isn't the total of minor offenses ticketed on New Year's Eve. It's the total for the entirety of the holiday weekend, which officially ran from December 28th through January 3rd. While it's possible the surprisingly low number of citations is an anomaly, or that this year's revelers were unusually polite and sober, the ancillary evidence suggests otherwise. Instead, the New Year's Eve numbers seem to confirm suggestions that police officers are purposefully ignoring lesser offenses. The New York Times reported earlier this week, police officers arrested or ticketed only 22 people for avoiding the subway fare by jumping the turnstiles last week. One year ago, during the first week, 
week of January 2014, police cited nearly 1,400 New Yorkers for the same offense. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Now Facebook is rolling out their newest feature, LifePoint, which analyzes users' histories to determine exactly when things went wrong. The new feature comes through photos, status updates, likes, everything that you put on Facebook in order to pinpoint how someone irreparably ruined their life. For example, it might highlight your friend's spring break trip in 2003 when she took her first shot, or your cousin's engagement to a guy named Scott spelled with a K. So, Facebook must have a lot of depressing information to work with. Well, we look for sadness indicators, positive versus negative adjectives and status updates, whether you've liked a corporate entity such as Walmart or Arby's. One of LifePoint's most buzzed about features is the life comp- pair function, which lets you see how your mistakes stack up to others. Here, I'm overlaying my graph with a graph of a childhood friend. You can see his life ended up much worse than mine, which is great. Anything with a profile has a life point, so you can look forward to finding out when your favorite bands, TV shows, and companies started going downhill. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you'd like. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We are kicking off the third hour of the live Sunday edition of the program. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And a demo. And I've been teasing it all night. I think we can actually jump into it now. Andy Greenberg's article over at Wired.com. Why the Silk Road Trial Matters. And he'll give you basics on what this is all about in case you're new to it. Yeah, and I think it's a great overview. I've been reading it in the breaks. Yeah. Uh, So if you don't know anything about the Silk Road. Right. This is going to fill you in. Ross Ulbricht is finally getting his day in court. Kind of, right? After all, it's going to be terrible. What does that mean, too, when they say that? Well, it's worth pointing out that the day in court that you think you get isn't what you think you get. Yeah, it's not what you're getting, you know. And then we'll get into this, but. So 15 months after plainclothes FBI agents grabbed him in the science fiction section of a San Francisco library and accused him of running the billion-dollar online drug bazaar known as the Silk Road. It's a day that anyone who cares about crime, punishment, and privacy in the shadows of the Internet will be watching. If Ulbricht doesn't take a last-minute plea deal and his trial begins as scheduled in a New York courtroom on Tuesday morning, it will be the most significant case of its kind. Is there any probability on that? Is anyone like whether or not he'll plea? Right. Is that is he? Because like I know when I was in jail, you know, I wrote out that hey, I'm not taking the plea deal. Mm -hmm. Has he? Has he? Has any communication through lawyers or his mom? I know who's his spokesperson essentially. You know, I not that you've heard of. I don't know. I have talked to his mother. We had Lynn on the program um, once or twice in the past, and I mean, obviously they've gone this far. It's a lot of stalling if you're going to take a plea deal at the last moment. I mean, it seems like he's it seems like he's going to the wall on this, but it could be a really nice plea deal that they offer at the last. You moment never know. As well. and, you know, he's been in jail a while. I don't know how you know like how these I mean, things he, are he's weighing been in on for him. Fifteen months, right? Like, uh, I, I, I guess you could hold out and hope for one really great last plea sure, deal. Sure, maybe offer. they offer him the the granddaddy of all sweet Rich deals. Rich Paul got like, an offer like that when Rich Paul was literally like the day moments, before trial. Yeah. They offered him, okay, we'll give you no time in in jail. Jail. And right. he ended yeah, up getting the same a, to me. You know? Right. He ended up getting a year sentence because he went through with the trial and I'm, I'm sure was that was weighing on him yep. later on. But uh, but I think he's still happy and satisfied that he took the principled road, even though it meant that he had to. Yeah, I mean, I, I refused the plea deal in my first round with the wiretapping and took it in the second, uh, you know, many reasons. But sometimes it's just what works out. But I hope he goes the distance. But I was just wondering if he, there was a. Uh, possibility of this because he is facing some serious time and maybe there was something happening but sure, well, no word yet and it's because he's not taking the plea at least thus far is one of the reasons why this is such an important trial because not taking the plea means the trial can happen normally trials like this don't happen because almost everybody takes the plea exactly so we don't have the chance for a jury to hear a case of somebody who's you know alleged to be a drug dealer or whatever that because they take a plea and they just go and they sit it off in prison and then they get out and it's it's over yeah with. like a, a a sabu and uh jeffrey hammond you know both Sabu's do- a hacker right yeah, he was uh, allegedly one of the masterminds of uh, the Anon LOLs uh, who helped. He, 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 uh, Didn't he snitch? Yeah, that's why Jeffrey Hammond and right. some of the other guys are in jail over the Stratford uh, hacks, email security. 
firm. So uh, going on here, he says it's a day that anyone who cares about crime punishment and privacy will be watching. Uh, so going on, the Silk Road anonymous drug market he's accused of creating was an unprecedented experience. Experiment in online anarchy and black market commerce. And Ulbricht's insistence until now on taking his case to trial means its fundamental issues will be argued in public. In many ways, this is the only case of its kind uh, to play out in front of a jury. Ulbricht, who's 29, faces charges that include running a narcotics, hacking, and money laundering conspiracy, as well as a kingpin charge usually reserved for mafia dons and drug lords. Like I said, they're treating him like he's Pablo Escobar. I know. You always pick up mafia dons and drug lords in public libraries. (laughs) (laughs) Right? That's what I thought when I read that. The case against him is likely strong. Prosecutors already have shown in pretrial hearings that they caught Ulbricht with his laptop seemingly logged into a Silk Road page called Mastermind showing a detailed accounting of the site's activities and finances. They've also revealed they found a logbook on his hard drive and a journal that allegedly detailed his day-to-day activities running the site. And if those claims are true, it's almost unbelievable. Wouldn't you? I'm glad you brought that up because I was thinking this is like the like this is the most careless thing such a brilliant person could do, right? If this person is running this type of a website you to would keep think a document to keep a journal about it why well see now i can i can understand some sort of journal like i mean if you're running a business like by default right i mean you run a business you keep tracks you keep measurements like um like you know even myself who has a who has two felonies one for selling marijuana like i kept a ledger now these things might have been coded sure they might have been elsewhere um you know but t- t- how, how they spell this out it seems Super careless. No, we don't know. We haven't read it, right? So we don't know what the journal means. We don't know what Greenberg set is meaning or what the journal would mean when Greenberg describes it as it's detailing his day to day activities. Greenberg hasn't read it, nor has anyone else besides. Sure, the it just seems that it's it, how they're wording it. It's probably just how they're wording it, but it would seem extremely careless that this guy wouldn't be using a higher level of security doing the business that he'd done. And and you know, if, if he is actually the person they are accusing him of being. Uh, he w- seems to have a vast knowledge of internet security. You know, he would have to have yeah, just, deep was, web, you know. Yeah, you have to w- really wonder, you know, why he would keep a log like that. I mean, if he's just talking about the drama that happens, because there's all kinds of, the Silk Road, There, if you visited their forums, you know, there was always some controversy over someone trying to scam the, scam people or hack the site. Right. And, and the administrators were always involved in interpersonal disagreements between sellers and buyers and so was he journaling that stuff too? I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll find out more here as the trial kicks off on Tuesday. So going on here, Ulbricht's defense team, led by renowned terrorism case defender attorney Joshua Dreidel and financed in part by donations from Bitcoin mogul Roger Veer, won't make it easy for prosecutors. We may see a lively, dramatic, and precedent-setting trial. Here are a few reasons to follow it closely. Point one, it's a test of anonymity and surveillance online. The Silk Road pioneered a new kind of online marketplace, one that's open to the public, but whose administrators, buyers, and sellers are anonymous, thanks to tools like the software Tor, that stands for the Onion Router. Tor is an anonymizing client for the, and server, uh, for the internet that allows people to purportedly use the internet anonymously. And that's the only way you could access the Silk Road was through Tor. So it wasn't on the open internet. It was on this, what's called the dark net and also Bitcoin, uh, which could be used anonymously if used in the right way. The prosecution's case will need to cut through that anonymity to prove Ulbricht is indeed the masked mastermind of Silk Road known as Dread Pirate Roberts. For the industry of copycat sites that followed Silk Road, including popular black markets like Evolution and Agora, That makes this trial a case study in the vulnerabilities law enforcement uses to attack the dark web's hidden contraband bazaars and identify the people who run them. And one of the big questions here that has yet to be answered in any of the pretrial motions and filings has been how did the FBI find the server? Because the idea behind Tor is that it includes all kinds of information about locations of servers and IP addresses and all of that. So how did they determine the location, the physical location? How did they know which company to go track down and send a threatening letter to or show up physically and demand to search their their Right, equipment? and there's a number of reasons that's important because, you know, A, you'd want to know who was complying, right? Who's, who bows down to the United States government? I mean, my default is everybody, but 
you know, it'd be nice for the consumers of such services to at least have that information or for the market to provide the alternative. Uh, the other is, I, I, don't, I don't know if you know more about this maybe than I do, but I know I've read stories for a while, maybe over the past six to eight months, where, you know, the Tor network is in question. Yes. And so that's, you know, if this could provide that, uh, you know, uh, hard piece of evidence, like if they're like, mm, we, we, you know, it's not yeah, as... Yeah, we can verify that the Tor network was exploited. Compromised, yeah. Yeah. And so that's what they have not revealed in any point yet. And whether or not they're going to be able to have this trial without revealing that info, because I imagine the feds are going to do everything they can to reveal how it was that they, or to prevent revealing how it was that they found the location of that server. So that's one of the big question marks here that hopefully will be cleared up. But going on with Greenberg, he says, An evidence list accidentally published by the court and spotted by the Daily Dot shows the prosecution's plan to use screenshots from Ulbricht's seized computer to link him to the Silk Road and the Dread Pirate Roberts' identity. The defense plans to contest or to contest the authenticity of that evidence. So that'll be interesting. I mean, th- who knows what this is going to be like. We're, I'm excited to, uh, to see what happens here. There's more coming up. We'll tell you more about what Greenberg says, why you should care about this trial. That kicks off Tuesday morning. More coming up on Free Talk Live. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. Our founding fathers did all they could to protect individual freedom from the very government they were creating. They knew that government should have the power to protect us from each other, but our founders also knew the dangers of government power, that it could be used to violate our rights. The government they created wasn't a simple democracy where majorities always rule and our individual rights are at the mercy of the simple majority of voters. Our founders knew that this had been tried and failed, as in ancient Greece. Our founders instead tried to protect liberty by creating a strictly limited government, with only certain powers granted it. They also devised a government of overlapping powers, balances, and checks to ensure these limits were honored. They understood that when government has the power to protect us from everything, it also has the power to take everything from us. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today is January 5th, 2014, and gold opened at 1197.90. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1242.08, 621.04 for a half ounce, or 310.52 for a quarter ounce. That's 1242.08, 621.04, and 310.52. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. Why would they go around bombing people around the world? Doesn't that make us less safe? Well, you know what? I guess some of these people got it coming. It's a good day to be dead if you're a terrorist search. And how many of the people that the U.S. military has too. killed in the last decade have been terrorists? A whole bunch of them. You know what? what percentage? You like some liberal church. What percentage? A lot of people I'm not a liberal, sir. Coming. Liberals you support war, from what I can tell. Take a look. Obama looks war. war when we need it. We have justifiable we need war. war. You know, people like you. <laughs> you are for good men do nothing, you jerk. Wait, wait, wait a second, Charlie I'm jerk. I'm not bombing part. anyone. You can feel however you feel about me, but Smedley Butler, the two-time Medal of Honor winning Marine, felt the same way. Well, you know what? Because they're headed the right way. You know what? We should have went after China. We should have chased those tricons across that river. And we should have bombed them. Uh, we should have nuked them. We should have... Uh, you are horrible. Them. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday edition of the program with you in studio. You've got me, Ian. And a demo. A demo's here from copblock.org. He's got it all over him. You got the copblock uh, <laughs> hat. Yeah, thing. the beanie, the t shirt, tattoo on my arm. I got copblock all over. Skull me. cap, I guess some people call those things. As, yep. So, uh, copblock.org, great website. They do awesome work over there. Be sure you check that out. We're talking about the Silk Road trial. It is scheduled to kick off Tuesday morning, presuming there's no last-minute delays. Uh, that's when it's going to happen. Activists are already gathering in New York City. Many more will be heading down tomorrow. Uh, there's a, at least a couple folks, a handful actually, from uh, from New Hampshire that yep. are, are going down there. They've already made up some signage, so they're going to be going out there holding up signs in the early morning hours and uh, trying to to reach folks with the the ideas of freedom and jury nullification. I know some people think that it's not being covered or that not enough folks are coming, but I think uh, they're doing a good job. Uh, you and I were discussing the break, some of the sign uh, signage that was going to happen, the people handing out literature, and then uh, other forms of protests that will go down there. And so, you know, the jury nullification uh, billboards. Yep, there's going to be jury nullification activists out They'll there. They've been up for a couple weeks in, already. Yeah, the bill, right, the billboard things are up. Uh, they're going to be actual activists on the ground right. as well, handing out information to everyone. That Many goes by. media a- avenues, including the Liberty Beat, which I've is heard on Vice the breaks. Vice is going to be there too. Well, that's great. They yeah. do a uh, great work. So, uh, so yeah. So huge we'll, outlet too. Yeah, we're going to keep you in the loop with what's going on with the, the trial, as uh, our very own Derek J. Freeman is right now packing to head down to New York City, and he's planning on staying there. I don't know if it's for the whole trial, but he's definitely going to be there for a week and as long as he can uh, handle, as right? long as he can, uh, as long as he can afford to do that. Because you know that is one of the reasons why people can't go at Amo is because it's expensive. It's a duration, yeah. You know, you want to stay in Manhattan. I guess you could stay outside of Manhattan and then truck Trent, in yeah. every single day and get on the that subway. That could get expensive after a, either way. A it's, while. it's a big. T- you know, if, even if even if you can li- even if you can somehow stay in New York City fairly cheaply, maybe with like a crashing at somebody's house or something like that. Still, there's costs involved in getting there and. Yeah. And taking time off work, as a lot of people, you know, have jobs and stuff. So uh, thank goodness for all the people who are going. I mean, I'm sure that uh, the Ulbricht family is very grateful for anybody who can come out to help out and hold a sign or or whatever. So we'll talk more about the actual goings-on of the trial as that happens throughout the week. But we're sharing right now from Wired.com. And by the way, if you want to help out, it's worth mentioning, if you want to help out with the Ross Ulbricht case, you can't get there physically, they will take your contributions. Go to freeross.org. They will take Bitcoin, PayPal, cut them a check, whatever it is you can do. If you want to help pay for this very expensive attorneys, you know, team of attorneys he's got, I'm sure his parents would appreciate it because they are not wealthy people. At least that's what Lynn, his mother, has told us. So you can go to Free Ross, that's freeross.org, and donate there. So uh, Andy Greenberg, Wired.com, explaining why this case matters. First of all, because it's happening, because it's actually going to a jury trial. There's a lot of stuff that uh, you know doesn't. A lot of cases that might touch on similar issues have never seen the light of a jury. So there's a chance for jury nullification, and the prosecution knows this, and that's why they filed a motion in advance trying to prevent the defense from putting on any kind of case that might hint at jury nullification. That would be a huge unintended uh, victory, in my opinion. A jury nullification in a federal case of this magnitude? Wow. Don't get your hopes be, up, but it well, would be amazing. I'm crossing my fingers yeah. on it, but that would be, whew, that's like the pinnacle of like success. So the claim is that the, the, the prosecution is going to be using screenshots, what they claim are screenshots from Ulbricht's computer to link him to the Silk Road and Dread Pirate Roberts, but the defense will contest this, uh, be uh, the contesting the authenticity of it. In pretrial motions, the defense has cited United States versus Vayner, in which the court ruled last year that some social media screenshots are inadmissible evidence because they too easily can be faked. I mean, anybody with half a Photoshop, knowledge of Photoshop yeah. can make up anything they want. 
Quote, to the extent that the prosecution uses screenshots against Ulbricht, the argument will be that you can't prove that screenshot is what you say it is, says the EFF attorney, Hani Fakuri. Defense attorney Dreidel is doing his job, which is to raise as many challenges as he can. In an order on Wednesday, Judge Catherine Forrest ruled against a defense motion to dismiss a trove of digital evidence it contested under the Vayner precedent. But, she said, Ulbricht's lawyers could challenge the authenticity of each piece of evidence as it's introduced. That could provide a series of tests of exactly what kind of materials represent in the eyes of the court a provable connection between an individual and his secret online persona. So how do you feel when cases like this, like, so this is a matter for, like, you know, you're going to have a lot of expert uh, testimony, right? Mm -hmm. A guy will come in that's like a, like a Photoshop or an right. expert with Photoshop and show you how images could be manipulated and created and mm -hmm. how you may or may not be able to tell. Um, how do you feel that weighs on a jury? Well, you know, it just depends on the jury, right? I mean, there's these are likely people that ally with themselves with the state and with the system. I mean, that's how they well, get I mean, juries. take out their ideology and stuff. Like, just because here's my opinion, essentially, is that when I believe the state does this, this is a tactic for the state. So I don't even think they care about the screenshots or that they even provide much, you know, concrete evidence. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, four days or two days or seven hours of talking about these things and like this expert and a counter and then it's all lost in translation right now these guys are tired it's they're fatiguing. bored sure. exactly it's like a drain it's like you know they 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 get to sell the point they get to show them the images right mm -hmm. and so that sticks and then they spend x amount of time way more than it's so like they're interested for the first 15 minutes well the image is going to be challenged before it's shown right so the defense is going to challenge its authenticity before oh, i didn't the know if the motions were already asked well, for that, and then they were going to allow it. Well, no, what happened is the judge de denied the motion to dismiss the entire bulk of evidence, so they tried to get it all thrown out in advance. But the judge did say they could challenge each piece. So as the you know the prosecutor right. says, Exhibit I'd a. like to introduce this, the objection, and then they'll take the jury out of the room, and then it's going to be a it's it's fiasco. Be a this is going to be yeah, it's gonna be draining. One of the most controversial questions in the Silk Road case has been, as we talked earlier, how the uh, how did the FBI find the server that hosted the website? The prosecution all but admitted in pretrial arguments that the FBI hacked into the site without a warrant to reveal its IP address and thus its location. Judge Forrest rejected the defense's Fourth Amendment argument that a warrantless hack is an illegal search and ought to taint subsequent evidence stemming from the FBI's investigation. You know, like they, the cops, detectives on your local police force aren't supposed to be able to go bust someone's door in and then snoop around their house without a warrant. That's an illegal search. If they do that and they find your bong and your pot, then that's supposed to be thrown out based on fruit of the right. poison tree doctrine. But here the judge is saying that, uh, well, the FBI hacking this website, that's not an illegal search. So, hey, all the evidence is admissible. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We can do what we want. So even though it's the same thing, if you if you hack a website, that's the almost the equivalent to breaking and entering into somebody's they home. They put people in jail, the government, for right. hacking websites of their uh, suppliers, you know, defense agencies, uh, when contractors. They do it. It's totally fine. Yes, one set of rules for you, another for us. But at trial, the defense could question FBI investigators about how they located the Silk Road and could also repeat that Fourth Amendment argument in an appeal. So what else is interesting, says Greenberg, is that radical libertarianism is on trial. He says the Dread Pirate Roberts didn't see himself as a mere cyber criminal. When I interviewed him in the summer of 2013, we read that interview on the air. It's very interesting. Uh, this was he interviewed Dread Pirate Roberts, right, the, not uh, the Ross alias. Robert. Uh, he described the Silk Road as, quote, at its core, a way to get around regulation from the state. If they if they say we can't buy and sell certain things, we'll do it anyway and suffer no abuse from them, unquote. The anonymous Bitcoin-enabled commerce on the Silk Road pioneered, he argued, was, or the, the commerce that the Silk Road pioneered, he argued, was the beginning of a new era of anarchic markets with no regulatory control. We'll talk more about what matters at the Silk Road trial, according to Wired.com's Andy Greenberg, who's sort of been following the phenomenon the entire time. Uh, we'll get into that coming up here. You're welcome to share your thoughts on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. More coming up. 
hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Mom, I can't do my math homework. I just don't get it. I hate math. <sighs> I've always tried to be a good mother, but when it came to Jamie's math, I was at a loss. Then a friend told me about Math Made Easy DVDs. Concepts are simplified in an easy way to follow and review, and students can learn at their own pace in the convenience of home. Listen, in the frustration, call Math Made Easy. Call now, 1-800-USA-MATH. That's 1-800-872-6284. Or visit us at mathmadeeasy.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York Central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Attention men who've taken Androgel or any other testosterone therapy products. Androgel or other low-T products have been linked to heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, even death. Scientific studies indicate that the use of testosterone therapy products may double a man's risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one took Androgel or a testosterone therapy product and suffered from a heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or any other cardiac event, you might be entitled to financial compensation. You have rights, and you need to let us fight for your rights. And you pay no fees unless we win. So call the Tort Attorneys right now. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. Cases may be referred to participating law firms in your jurisdiction. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live. We are here to take your calls about anything that's on your mind, or we'll just talk at you about stuff. Like the Ross Ulbricht trial, which is kicking off on Tuesday morning. Andy Greenberg says this trial matters, and he's absolutely right. He's uh, pointing out a few different reasons why he thinks it matters. We'll share those with you, and, of course, you can comment. 
Give us your thoughts on this or anything that you would like to discuss. Tonight, with you, it's in here. And a demo. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features you'll find waiting for you there. We've got a webcam. You can go and watch us do the show at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Like all the other features you'll find at freetalklive.com, the webcam is totally free. So we're back here uh, with the story from wire.com. We're well, at least, I think, at least halfway through, more than halfway through at this point. He's saying that uh, radical libertarianism is on trial and points out that Dread Pirate Roberts, the person who was anonymously running the Silk Road, an underground drug marketplace kind of website, uh, that this guy is a self proclaimed liberty minded guy. Like, there was no doubt about it. Anybody who followed along the Silk Road on the forums, there was even a, a whole forum dedicated to Dread Pirate Roberts giving reading recommendations to the people who came to the site. Like, what books they could read that would teach them about voluntarism and libertarianism. Yeah, he's pretty like hardcore. That. So, uh, one of the quotes from Greenberg, Greenberg's, Andy Greenberg's the author of this article. He interviewed Dread Pirate Roberts back in 2013 about running the Silk Road. It was actually the first and only interview, to my knowledge, that Dread Pirate Roberts ever granted to anyone in the media. And one of the quotes from that is where he's talking about how the Silk Road is a new era of anarchic markets with no regulatory control. Quote, sector by sector, the state is being cut out of the equation and power is being returned to the individual. This is Dread Pirate Roberts. I don't think anyone can comprehend the magnitude of the revolution we are in. I think it will be looked back on as an epoch in the evolution of mankind. This guy was a visionary, yeah. no doubt. This uh, Now back to Greenberg. He says that revolutionary ethos has made the Silk Road and Ulbricht a cause célèbre for certain libertarians and anarcho-capitalists. If Ross is convicted, uh, quote, if Ross is convicted, the internet will become a place of fear and we will be at the whim of state power, says Julia Taransky, an anarchist activist in a video rallying supporters for a courthouse protest on the morning his trial begins. Well, I'll just, you know, politely disagree with Julia. If Ross is convicted, the internet's not going to become a place of fear. People are going to continue to buy and sell whatever it is they want to. Agro Marketplace, from what I understand, is still online. Well, it could affect, I mean, maybe they don't mean, like, entirely that it'll, like, be driven, but I mean, like, look at the drug trade. I mean, like, most people who maybe would start a business that would maybe sell some sort of drug aren't, you know, it's like now that the ones that are left are, like, maybe of questionable character or violence or they'd find other means, you know, it's like slims the market. And so, like, the next person who decides to start a Silk Road, if there might be a, a you know, willing to do that they might be like well i don't want to end up like ross and so they won't but this leads it to like what cartels and more violent well, psychopathic okay i see people. what you're saying i see you're saying that uh if you take out an, a nice guy like ross then other nice guys won't be as likely to start similar businesses right and then it leaves it to the people who are you know the, are more thuggish well maybe i mean maybe not or maybe the next ross will have to be smart like not smarter but like because ross i believe is is very smart but uh they would have to learn from this, right? And like it would have to go different. And so like it would change the the paradigm that it's in now. But I don't I don't know. It, I don't know. I, I don't could I, I could relate that it would it would create some fear. It would it is, some it is people, meant to this is this prosecution people. of him is definitely meant to put fear into the deep no web doubt. circles. No doubt. But you know these guys are pretty hardcore. I mean, when Silk Road went down, they had Silk Road 2.0 up within a month, and Silk Road 2.0 got taken down just a couple months ago. Right, did it? And did Silk Road 3.0 is. Uh, but know, they just uh, took down the site. They didn't actually grab. No, like, they got the dude too, and oh, this guy was even that. sloppier than uh, than allegedly. If it, if he was who they say he is, then he was even sloppier. If the <laughs> truth, the facts are the of the case are true, and he actually uh, apparently already like copped to it. So he's basically walking off and, to and, and it. taking I don't think a he's deal. Off. I don't well, know I mean, what the deal is, but he he essentially admitted to it under questioning, like he cracked or something like that. Really? That's what I heard. There hasn't been much coverage of that. Well, story then how can you say that these guys are? You know, hardcore. Like if they're being sloppy and they're copping deals. There's several st sites that are still online. I mean, the guy, whoever it is that's running uh, Agora Marketplace, the number one site out there as of the time of the Silk Road 2.0 takedown, Agora Marketplace was slightly more popular than Silk Road 2.0, and it was still up and running. They're not going to shut down, shut their. Oh crap! They got Ross. Well. Right. I guess we better close our doors and stop making all this money. Well, I mean, you this know, is so. a common flaw with, I guess, like humans in general. You know, we even see this in activists, you know, as far as like folks who have come here to, to Keene, you know, like 
not learning from other mistakes. You know, mm, it seems yeah. like 2.0 didn't learn much from the information they got from Well, right now we don't one. know what the mistakes are that Ross made because we, uh, if he was the one making them, he hasn't been framed. True. Uh, we don't know what mistakes were made because the evidence hasn't been shown yet. So there's a lot that people are going to That's another problem. This. It's like you don't even know because the government's the one telling us the information as right, we discussed. You can't, you can't their word yeah, for who, it. Who knows what they, who believe what they say. Julia said in her video, quote, the state is testing the waters. If we don't give them a storm, we consent to our silencing. Unquote. Ulbricht has expressed plenty of radical libertarian rhetoric in his public life, but his defense likely won't bring up politics, says the EFF's Hani Fakuri, even if he's convicted and trying to minimize his sentence. He says, quote, talking about your motivation for why you commit a crime is not that important legally unless it negates your criminal intent. The judge will be looking for whether Ulbricht shows contrition. Politics is probably a bad strategy. And he's right from a lawyer's perspective. But if Ulbricht is in this for the principle of the matter, then if he realizes they've got him by the balls, so to speak, with the evidence, he may actually talk about the uh, his motivations because if he can sway the jury to nullify then whether he's contrite or not won't matter ultimately being contrite is a way to try oh, i'm so sorry judge what was i thinking i did a terrible terrible thing and from now on i'll be a good boy that's that's a tactic that defense attorneys want their clients to use to minimize the sentence sure and i mean and i think that is the big question here you know we spent some time talking about all these little details, and you know, a lot of folks do too as well. Like, hey, can he get off on this? Can he file this motion? This evidence is nothing. They're railroading him here. They're throwing him on a bus here. Well, I, I think it, you know, the biggest like, you know, like uh, if this plays out, what I'm more interested in hearing is, and when how it plays out is like, where's the goal? Like, I hope I can identify that, or maybe somebody relays that more clearly because you know Ross has been in a cage for 15 months, not mm-hmm. exactly taking phone calls, and uh, you know, we had talked about it off the air but the goal like if his goal is to get a not guilty verdict i think that's gonna be very difficult and i think it's almost impossible if the goal is to like shed light on like the you know harms of the state the you know ridiculousness of like its investigation its rules its process like they break their own rules they violate you know like like we just mentioned before what the fbi did they have locked up people for Mm -hmm. for doing cyber terrorism or hacking and so hopefully you know, uh, if the goal is to get like not guilties and play their 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 game, then I, I think it's well, a very hard win. Well, OK. And we don't know what the goal is. Right. No. And usually when you're facing 30, 40, 50 years in prison, the goal becomes minimize the prison sentence for the average person. Right. For sure. That. And there's no reason to believe that Ross's goal is anything different than that. But if if your goal is to get a not guilty, which is obviously the ideal circumstance, then there's two ways to do it. There's the way where the system can't prove its case, where you you know kick out enough right. evidence. You beat the system with the system. Beat the system inside the system. And the other one is to talk about jury nullification and to you know somehow now in a lot of cases you can't even touch those words in court. Those words will get you a mistrial, uh, contempt of court charge. And, and most likely in a federal court. Yeah, I, I imagine that's true in federal court. But if Ulbricht is able to get on the stand and testify to his motivations as to why he did this and how the Silk Road saved people's lives by the fact by virtue of the fact that it took business out of the like the streets essentially took the drug business out of the streets and made it a buy mail business where the the buyers didn't know who the sellers were and the sellers didn't know who the buyers were and so nobody gets robbed at least at gunpoint or knife point or anything like that and people weren't getting bad drugs as often so they weren't overdosing and so he's literally saved people's lives he could in theory sway the uh the jury to go for not guilty especially it's been my it's been my experience that even though you could get a jury to sense some compassion in that matter they'll still find you guilty you still broke the law you know like even uh weed clause like yeah you're an old guy middle age you're not your standard tattoo but like so they didn't convict him of the felony, but they're like, you're still breaking the law. You know, like you have to do that. And so. Oh, I'm with you, man. I hope I don't Ross's trust the jury angle the right is just to show the world what is going on here and how badly. To accept that he's going to go to prison for he, the rest I, of his I life. I hope that, he, he, that he's accepted that. Not for the rest of his life, I hope. I hope that something changes before then. We'll come back with more here in moments. 855 450 free. But if he's not showing, if he's not telling the judge how sorry he is, they may hit him with the max. Who knows? We're coming up here. This is Free Talk Live. Your thoughts welcome. Hi everyone, I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. 
gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, Look for the green box at your favorite store. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control here in the remaining moments. You're welcome to share your thoughts on the Silk Road trial. We will, of course, be updating you on it throughout the week and throughout however long it goes for. But it's not going to be a short one, I suspect. The toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. Ian and Adamo in the studio. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. We're sharing with you a story from wired.com. Andy Greenberg reporting on why he thinks the Silk Road trial matters. He's pointing out that there's some pretty serious uh, questions about anonymity software and how the Silk Road got tracked down in the first place. Silk Road being an underground kind of drug marketplace and it's sort of more of like a black marketplace. There's, uh, you know, other things besides drugs were sold there, like fake identifications, hacking tools, things like that. 
Um, so there's also the viewpoint, he says, that radical libertarianism is going to be on trial. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to be. We'll see if the state makes some sort of claims about how he's a bad guy because he's a libertarian. They could. They certainly have done that on at your trial, Adamo. That, Many uh, times. And yeah. other trials that uh, that we've seen and experienced. They uh, made you sound like you were going, you know, if, if you if the jury were to find you not guilty, that the entire state system would crash and burn during your yeah. trial. Uh, so. We have to... Uh, deter other people from doing these things and da 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 but that's commonly... because you could talk about jury nullification in your trial because you're in new hampshire where that appears to be allowed but in the it is now and even even before that was the law here uh when you represent yourself i mean they might tell them to take it out of their minds or do, but you're not held to like the same uh setting the uh, same standards that they didn't say that at your trial. They uh, they accepted that you had argued that, and then they argued why the jury shouldn't nullify. Essentially, sure. Using my fear my tactics. last wiretapping, and then the first one, they were like, you know, jury nullification doesn't matter, even though you can mention it and whatever. Well, that was uh, the one in Massachusetts, right? Yeah, yeah. Where if the jury did actually nullify your case, which yeah, was awesome. which was funny. Uh, ironically enough, it happened in Massachusetts and not in New Hampshire, but that's another story. So uh, let's go on here. The, these are the things he says about the Silk Road trial as to why it matters. He says that won't stop supporters from seeing every moment in the trial as another turn in the battle for Internet freedom. Win or, you, win or lose, Ulbricht has become a martyr for the cause. Finally, he says that we'll be, uh, we'll be learning more about the crypto-anarchist courtroom drama. He says the timeline of events the prosecution will lay out in Ulbricht's case will be political and privacy issues aside one hell of a story. Ulbricht is accused of paying for the murders of six people, including a blackmailer and potential informant. Those murders for hire aren't charged in the case. In fact, none of those alleged hits ever seems to have taken place. But a ruling Wednesday from Judge Forrest declares the murders fair game for the prosecution at trial as part of proving Ulbricht's conspiracy charge. So again, they're going to get to talk about things that have never been proven about Ross Ulbricht and Dread Pirate Roberts as though that they are, you know, fact. Glimpses in pre-trial hearings of the journal and logbook Ulbricht allegedly kept tell a story worthy of Breaking Bad. The records describe Ulbricht's three-year journey from allegedly growing the first psychedelic mushrooms sold on the Silk Road to the expansion of that digital creation into a booming online drug market and anarchist community and eventually to the violence Ulbricht is accused of using to defend it. It's a tale of rebellious ambition, revolutionary ideals, and potentially dark Faustian bargains. As the prosecution seeks to prove that story to a jury, we'll have a front row seat. Stay tuned. It's going to be interesting. It's going to, uh, in a number of levels, the, the, the protest outside, the shenanigans in the courtroom, the outcome... Mm -hmm. You know, sadly, I feel that the, the outcome is a foregone conclusion, and it's unfortunate, and uh, I applaud and believe that Ross is a hero. That should be, you know, his story should be told far and wide as many times as possible, and I applaud him for, you know, putting his own life on the line uh, for, it's very for brave. this. Yeah, it's he knew very he brave. Would go, he knew he could go down with the ship, right? I mean, and he probably knew it was going to go down. I mean, like, if sure, maybe not. Like, maybe he thought he had longer, but I mean, like, you're a pioneer. I mean, I understand... You know, I have the he was saying, probably the most wanted man in the world. Sure. I, I, I have the saying, I'd like to be ahead of the curve, but not so far that I'm the first one in the ditch. Well, you know, he was so far ahead of the curve, you know, carving the way that, mm. you know, that you might be. And, you know, maybe he's not because we have talked that there might have been more than one operator of this website. He might have sure. been. A uh, past one, a recent one, the current one at the time. Could who have been knows? Patsy. Who knows? Right. Maybe the real Dread Pirate Roberts is still out there. That could be. And, uh, so, Adamo, we were talking during the break and wanted to take the conversation during the show. The question was, should he testify? Should Ross Ulbricht testify at his own trial? What do you think? Well, I believe he should. Again, but that's because I believe the goal shouldn't be to get... I think it's a bad sh thing to do if you want a not guilty, right? I think that's what his attorneys may be advising him to do unless they've come up with some alternative, like, outside-the-box game plan for their defense, which mm -hmm. I, I, is probably realistic as well. Um, but if he just wants to win as in not guilty, go home, uh, then testifying probably isn't in his best interest, not knowing all the information they have, but that's what I would guess and assume. Um, but I think that if, you know, like how I approach court cases and my mindset is to like show the injustice, in, you know, in the system, show the hypocrisy and like also take it as a, an opportunity to seize the megaphone and tell more people about your principles. So it's like, forget the jury, forget the prosecutor, forget mm -hmm. the judge. These people are bought, paid for, status, are not changing their minds. 
But the people that are going to document it, the transcripts, the words, the quotes, the things that can be brought out of this that, that the world is going to be watching, especially the liberty-minded world, uh, that could live, you know, infinitely and would be, you know, of huge value and inspiration, I think, to who knows how many others, millions maybe. So you're saying he should uh, fall on the sword effectively, that, you know, realize you're going to lose, this is going to be a guilty verdict, and get on the stand well, I don't and like tell the, t- the story. I don't like it saying falling on the sword because, like, I mean, I think he's already on the sword. Like, he's mm-hmm. caught. Like, I mean, like, he's already been in prison for 15 months, you know, like— He's not taking one for the team at this point. He's already taken one for the team. Hmm. You know, I don't, I think it's just kind of like your last moment to like, you know, speak before they're, before the door and they, from again. they, well, I, I'm hoping that he can still be heard from that. They don't get all crazy and lock him in like solitary or anything, but yeah, you might as well spill it all. Right. Like, well, y- you know what I mean? Like, you know, once Ross Ulbricht gets sentenced to, to prison. Oh yeah, they for, once you go to jail, people forget about you. You that, know, it, I mean, it happens. The liberty movement may still be aware of him. He may actually begin to be able to speak because right now he can't do media interviews for obvious legal reasons. Lawyers sure. will not allow you to do that kind of thing. Um, so maybe he will start to speak out if he is sentenced from inside a prison cell. We'll certainly take his calls. I mean, if he wants to call Free Talk Live from the prison cell, we'll pay the long distance bill. Um, but. Yeah, and we actually do have people in jail who call the show on a fairly regular basis. Sure, yeah, basis. I've called here from I'm from jail, but, but being uh, on Free Talk Live is certainly not exposure to the to the entire globe, and uh, people aren't you know there's there are some people that there are still kind of causes around like what is it Mumia Abul Jamal is one of them where there's like a group of people on the outside who believes he's innocent, and you know they're still pushing for him to be released, and you know but how widely known is is that guy? I mean mainstream media certainly isn't talking about him in any meaningful way so this is sort of his last bash i guess yeah and that's i mean might as well go out with a bang you might as well tell people you know uh whitey bulger had his case and i know these aren't apples to apples comparison but he's a gangster right yeah he was the mafia don in for boston? for boston and uh but there was a lot of corruption he had a lot of inner workings with some high uh federal agents you know mm. to the point where they claimed that he was an informant he claimed that he did a deal with taking care of a problem that one U.S. attorney ha- had, and he was promised immunity and information for <laughs> that. Um, and there was a whole story that never – he took it to trial, not because he thought he was going to get out of his life sentence, but he wanted to speak on this. And mm. I think at some point he was maybe given a promise that maybe jail wouldn't be so bad or those sentence wouldn't be the worst, but he didn't end up testifying and speaking about it. I thought about writing him about that, but I just don't want to see Ross have that same thing happen. Like, if you get the opportunity to speak and you have, you know, like – Whitey Bulger's thing is about corruption and police, and I think that people need to hear that. That, like, you know, here's a gangster who was allowed to become this, you know, mega Don because the FBI was busting his competition. You know, he would, they were nothing more than men with guns. They were enforcers, you know, mm-hmm. for him and, like, setting him up tips and, you know, removing the competition. Um, you know, Ross, I think, is a better, you know, like, Whitey's would show, like, corruption. Ross will show voluntarism, will show, like, you know, uh, uh, innovation and how the market can handle things and the police maybe, you know, and government aren't necessarily needed in these things. And, you know, to and, uh, and on the platform they're giving it, they're giving him, he might as well, you know, well seize that moment and, and take it. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. I think that uh, that he should testify and I think that he should testify with the intention of not only doing what you're saying, exposing the truth, truth or whatever, but also, you know, giving him that chance, however infinitesimally small, of persuading the jury that he's a likable character and that he didn't commit those murders and that, you know, that or the murder for hires and that uh, that he was doing this for the best interest well, of sh- people. Yeah, and- there could be a number of reasons to, to speak because not only to, like, reference the points, but to clear his name and well, lastly, otherwise maybe you get- just you're just the guy sitting at the defense table. And everybody's talking about you. The entire trial, everyone's talking about all these allegations that you've done, but you never say one word to the jury, and you never get to connect with them as a, as a human being. And I think that's your best chance to get a jury to nullify. And I think that, you know, in our friend Rich Paul's case, had he actually testified, I think he would have had a greater chance of having jury the jury nullify because they would have realized he's a likable. Well, affable, greater chance than zero, you right. know, like <laughs> fun guy. Like Rich point is a good oh one percent. You don't know Rich is a good guy if he doesn't open his mouth and talk to you. That's true. We'll uh, see you tomorrow. Tomorrow night, online in the meantime, freetalklive.com. Check out copblock.org as well. Do you try- On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of 
where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Kingdom the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, January 11th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.52 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,223 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $278. Antiwar.com reports, while smaller than its sister city of the Gaza Strip side of the border, Rafah, Egypt has long been an important city in the northern portion of the Sinai Peninsula of economic and strategic import. Friday, Egypt began displacing the residents of Rafah with a plan to eradicate the entire city, expelling thousands of families and demolishing every home as part of a plan to create a two-kilometer buffer zone between Sinai and the Gaza Strip. Egypt demolished significant numbers of homes back in October to create a 500-meter buffer, but has since decided to expand that to encompass materially the entire city. They have claimed Sinai rebels who have resisted the junta since the 2013 coup are using Gaza to resupply. The Sinai government denied that the plan amounted to the destruction of Rafah, claiming Egypt would rebuild a new Rafah a couple kilometers west of the old one. Whether anyone will choose to live there with policy established that anything near the border might get wiped out for dubious military reasons remains to be seen. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports two protesters were arrested at the McLean, Virginia home of former Vice President Dick Cheney on Saturday after 20 demonstrators, some in orange prison jumpsuits, walked onto his property to mark the 13th anniversary of the opening of the Guantanamo Bay prison. The protesters from the anti-war group Code Pink walked up to the house before police arrived and asked them to leave, according to Fairfax County Police spokesman Roger Henriquez. Two members who refused to go were arrested on trespassing charges. Police identified the two as Tyg Berry and Eve Tetaz, 57 and 83 years old respectively, both of Washington, D.C. The pair faced misdemeanor charges of trespassing and disorderly conduct. Another Code Pink group demonstrated without incident outside the home of CIA Director John Brennan, also in the Washington, D.C. suburb of McLean, as part